The Central Intelligence Agency has just announced that everyone should stay at home and while we're doing so, we could look into UFOs. They went on to say the following, back in 1978, the CIA declassified hundreds of documents detailing the agency's investigations into unidentified flying objects. This was during the late 1940s into the 1950s. We've decided to highlight a few documents within the vast amount of data contained within our Freedom of Act Information UFO collection that both skeptics and believers will find interesting. The truth is out there and it's your time to find out. One of these documents detailed the following. Going back in July 1952 in Berlin, furnished with the sworn testimony of an eyewitness, Oskar Link, a 46-year-old German and former mayor of NIDA House and West Berlin intelligence offices, begun investigating a most unusual flying saucer story. According to this story, an object resembling a huge flying pan and having a diameter of around 15 meters landed in a forest clearing in the Soviet zone of Germany. He said the following, while we were walking around Hasselbeck, my daughter pointed out something which lay at a distance of around 140 meters away. Since it was twilight, I thought that she was pointing at a young deer. I left my motorcycle near a tree and walked towards the spot which she pointed to. When, however, I reached the spot around 55 meters from the object, I realized that my first impression had been wrong. What I had seen were two men who were now about 40 meters away from me. They seemed to be dressed in some shiny metallic clothing. They were stooped over and were looking at something lying on the ground. I approached until I was around 10 meters from them. I looked over a small fence and then noticed a large object whose diameter I estimated to be between 13 and 15 meters. It looked like a huge frying pan. There were two rows of holes in this periphery, around 30 centimeters in circumference. The space between the two rows was around 0.45 meters. On top of this metal object was a black conical tower around 3 meters high. At that moment my daughter, who had remained a short distance behind me, called me. The two men must have heard my daughter's voice because they immediately jumped on the conical tower and disappeared inside. I'd previously noted that one of the men had a lamp on the front part of his body, which lit up at regular interviews. Now the side of the object on which the holes had been opened began to glitter. Its color seemed green but later turned red. At the same time I began to hear a slight hum. While the brightness and hum increased, the conical tower began to slide down into the center of the object. The whole object then began to rise slowly from the ground and rotate like a tomb. It seemed to me as if it was being supported by the cylindrical plant which had gone down from the top of the object through the center and had now appeared from its bottom on the ground. The object surrounded by a ring of flame was now a certain number of feet above the ground. I then noted that the whole object had risen slowly from the ground. The cylinder on which it was supported had now disappeared within its center and had reappeared on top of the object. The rate of climb had now become greater. At the same time, my daughter and I heard a whistling sound similar to heard when a bomb falls. The object rose to a horizontal position, turned towards a neighboring town and then gained altitude. It disappeared over the heights of the forest in the direction of Stockhouse. For the last few decades now, interesting reports have been coming from national parks. National parks are beautiful places to visit and offer some of the world's best sights. Unfortunately, these perfect natural sceneries also hold a secret that many have tried to explain. Although many of them are visited by tens of thousands of people every year, there's still a large amount of land that is rarely visited by people and this could be due to a number of reasons. Perhaps they are out of the way of normal paths. It's a hazard to get to them or they're just blocked off from the public. There are many experienced hikers and campers who disappear completely. Some such hikers even laid out plans of travel. Backup phones in case of emergencies telling family members and friends where their trail will be covering and so on. But when research parties go out to find them, not a single clue left behind as to what could have happened to them seems to serve it. However, recently it's come to the attention of some that even though there is a worrying trend of people going missing in national parks, there's also an increase in people encountering mysterious creatures. Scientists and researchers who work in the region have said that what people are seeing is nothing more than unidentified wildlife. But the people that encounter these creatures disagree. 
saying they know what they saw and it's unlike anything they've seen before. Going back a few years ago, park ranger surveillance from Round Rock Parks from Recreation came forward with some interesting photographs. The photos in question showed what appeared to be big footprints, and it got many people excited by the fact that these reports were being taken seriously. Three black and white photographs were posted which showed large footprints. It's said that it's not just footprints that have been reported in this location, but also clumps of hair and mysterious noises. However, a few weeks after the photographs made the rounds, they came forward with another update and they said that the prints were fake and were used to try and bring in more Torres. Although this was laughed off by most people, there were some that didn't see the funny side, with one person saying that they had seen a real Bigfoot and it was no laughing matter. Over the years, many different reports have emerged of people encountering mysterious things while in national parks. One of these comes from Santa Fe National Park. Going back, officials came forward about the appearance of mysterious wood structures. What's strange is that not only are they tall, but they seemingly appeared overnight. Most of them are between 6 and 20 feet in height and after taking down some of them, officials said they were built by using over 1,000 pieces of wood. One spokesperson said the wood structures are appearing at an alarming rate and their frequency has increased over time. The structures had park officials and even police officers baffled as to who was creating them. And not only that, but how these individuals managed to create them at such a fast pace. One of the concerns was that these structures posed a huge fire hazard. This is because they've been compared to structures that resemble those that used to build wood fires in the forest. However, these ones are much taller. The worry wasn't so much that whoever was building them was going to create a fire but the vandals may see them and want to set them on fire. If they were to be lit on fire, the authorities said it would be extremely hard to get them under control. At this moment in time, park officials have no idea who is behind the building of these strange wood structures, and they can't figure out a motive behind the construction of them. Some have suggested it's just the work of poor teenagers, however, to build them at the rates they're being built. You would need an extremely large group of people, it's been announced by the Forest Service that anyone caught building these wood structures will be fined $5,000. The structures are being built on federal land and they will treat it as trespassing. The forest officials have now said they're becoming more common than ever. One of the things that people encounter while exploring national parks is mysterious sounds. Many have come forward and said that while hiking it feels as if low and high-pitched sounds are following them. Some believe there could be creatures lurking out in our national parks that are causing these disappearances. Over the years, experts have come forward and said that they've encountered large humanoid creatures while out in these open areas. Of course, these claims are immediately shut down. However, these people stand by what they see. One hunter claimed that while camping in a national park, he heard strange grunting noises. When pointing a flashlight to where the noises were coming from, he saw a large Bigfoot-like creature, stating that it was over 8 feet tall. These creatures usually follow a theme. They stand on two legs and are roughly 7 to 12 feet tall. They have the general appearance of that of a large ape-like creature. Sightings of this beast have persisted for Ian since the time of the Aborigines in their ancient mythological folklore what is all the more startling about these claims is that even in the modern day people are encountering these creatures all over the globe there have been reports of them from Tibet, America and even Australia there's no shortage of these stories ancient myths credit these creatures as having run-ins with humans and when this happens it doesn't usually end well. Some have even managed to record some of these mysterious calls, and when given to scientists they have said that humans are unable to make these kinds of noises. Going back, old tales said that in Australia, the Yoi were the original inhabitants of the Australian continent, but were completely driven out of their native lands by men that came there to settle. Las Vegas, Reno and Fresno. There lies an area that's become known as the Nevada Triangle. The most famous triangle is the Bermuda Triangle, but this location has its fair share of strange happenings. Scientists have said that around 2,000 planes have gone missing in this area and that every year people come forward with their mysterious accounts, most of which the individuals are unable to explain. There have also been many people that have gone missing in this area. One person said that while here they were approached by an elderly man. 
The woman was asking for directions and the man was telling her where to go. At first everything seemed fine, but when she turned around to thank the man he was nowhere to be seen. The individual insists that to this day she has no idea where the man went. Then there's the reports of mysterious lights in the sky. For many years now, people close to this area have reported strange objects in the sky. These unidentified flying objects usually range in size from 20 to 65 feet in length and give off a variety of colors. The strangest thing about these objects is that they suddenly vanish without a trace. One person even reported that one of the objects appeared to follow her. Even after she got in her car, the object stayed in the sky and continued to follow her home. After this encounter, she said she went on to have nightmares for the next few weeks. But perhaps the most common report is that of large humanoid creatures said to live in the area. One person who was hiking said they could see what appeared to be a large human crouched in the bushes. When they went in for a closer look, however, it turned out to be something they couldn't identify. Although it was crouched, they were able to give quite an accurate description of the being and said that if it was standing, they think it would have been around 8 feet in height. It possessed two large brown eyes and was covered in thick dark curly fur. Whatever it was, it was trying to hide away from the individual. Whatever's going on in this area, it seems to be affecting quite a few people. As of right now, some have made the connection between national parks and have said that the majority of them have similar stories. With people detailing the same thing without even talking to each other. This has caused some to suggest there could be an unidentified creature out in the wilderness that every so often comes into contact with humans. After all, there's still a lot of this planet that remains to be explored, and this has made some put forward the idea that these creatures could be living in these locations out of the way of the majority of humans. Regardless, as of right now, scientists and researchers think that what people are seeing and encountering is nothing more than wildlife, and until solid evidence comes through, it's unlikely they're going to change their minds. Regardless, every year individuals are still coming forward and reporting the same thing. If someone is looking for information that is not publicly available, they can submit a freedom of information at request. You have to detail what you seek and why you want it, and in some cases many do end up getting replies or the information they were looking for. It doesn't always result in the individual getting what they want, but it does sometimes happen. This has caused various people to submit these requests in the hopes of getting the answers they seek. As reported by various outlets, most federal agencies now accept a freedom of information at request electronically, including by web form or email. If the agency agrees to your terms and the reason behind you wanting the information, you will usually get a reply with the document you seek attached. However, in some rare cases, some get more information than what they originally asked for. This is what happened to one individual who asked the Washington State Fusion Center about information on extreme groups. This report was first posted by Mark Rank, and they detailed how the Washington State Fusion Center accidentally released the wrong documents. Some of these documents included information on topics such as that of remote mind control. The individual said they posted the standard freedom of information request but got a bit more than what they asked for. Inside the email was attached an EMFX on the human body. It's fair to say that whoever sent these documents made a monumental error. It's no secret that the government carries out a variety of experiments and tests. The majority of the time these are kept under wraps, and the general public don't end up hearing about them. But this was one of those times where a human error caused a leak in information, and one that they most probably regretted. According to the documents, they detailed out of psychoelectronic weapons and remote mind control the journalists behind the original requests. Mr. Waltman then decided to open the files inside where a variety of illustrations that show different devices and techniques these devices were created with the sole purpose of manipulating the human mind one such weapon detailed how it uses electromagnetic forces to mess with the human body essentially, this device causes intense pain to the individual it's used on. Although these files are fascinating, it's also kind of scary. There have been whispers of these kinds of devices being used. When it's on paper though and sent to you by government officials, it becomes all the more interesting. As some have pointed out, why would they have this paper if it was made up? One individual claimed that the National Security Agency has the ability to take down US citizens. 
and they can do this by using psychological control operations. This can essentially cause everyday people to come across as insane, but this isn't their normal behavior, they're just reacting to the electronic device that's being used on them. Some handy technology if you're trying to make someone come across as being insane. The documents even go into detail remote brain mapping, even going as far as showing an illustration of a van parked outside a house. And sending electronic waves into people's brains and houses. Some have said that what they're doing is hitting you with these waves and then broadcasting your thoughts. It's not known where this information goes, but it could be into some kind of system. Again, this is just going by what the document says. This isn't something that's been made up, and the crazy thing is that the individual didn't even ask for these documents. They were accidentally sent to him. Mark Rock went on to say that he doesn't think the files are official, but does admit that it's a little strange how they ended up in their request. Others have gone on to say that this is evidence that they carry out these types of tests on the population, with others suggesting they use this technology to interrogate people. As some have pointed out though, it does seem like a strange link. You can clearly see when files are attached to emails, and to release this kind of information was only going to lead to out their theories being thrown out. Another interesting case that was recently announced was that of Nikola Tesla. Nikola Tesla has easily become known as one of the greatest minds of the modern era. At the time his unique mind wasn't appreciated. It's only been in the years following his death that people respected what he was trying to achieve. Nikola Tesla wasn't one to shy away from electricity and being able to harness it. He also worked on anti-gravity technology and something that became known as the ether. One of his famous quotes was the following, I have worked out a dynamic theory of gravity in all details, and hope to give this to the world very soon. As with many of the great minds of the past, there's a lot of people today that don't understand the impact they had on modern day life. Recently, the FBI released 64 pages of unreleased documents. This includes things like papers and documents that were collected shortly after Tesla passed away. For many years now theories have been floating around as to why Tesla's work was collected by the government. Some have said that Tesla's work wasn't important and wouldn't have impacts on us. If this was the case then why did the United States government quickly swoop in and collect his work? These papers would cause many theorists to put forward their ideas on what the papers contained. One of the main reasons people believe they collected his work is because he created an incredible machine. A type of ray that would have been able to take down enemies from miles away. Tesla's work obviously caught the attention of the FBI, as they wanted to come through what he'd been working on. One of their reasons for doing this was to ensure that any work of his didn't get into the wrong hands. For this reason, they decided it would be best if the documents remained in the property of the Office of Alien Property Custodian. This was, however, until the documents and other pieces of Tesla's work mysteriously disappeared after the war. Interestingly enough discussion had been created that the public was aware of some of these alleged inventions and it caused citizens to question Director J. Edgar Hoover about what tests were being working on. These are some extracts from the official FBI documents that got released. On the 26th and 27th of January 1943, an examination was made of the technical papers of Dr. Nikola Tesla, which after his decease had been stored in the Manhattan White House in New York City. This examination was made for the purpose of determining if any ideas of significant value in the present United States war effort could be found among his possessions. Participating in this examination were Mr. John C. Newington, New York Office of the Alien Property Custodian, Dr. Charles of the Washington Office of Scientific Research and Development, and John G. Trump of the Office of Scientific Research and Development of Massachusetts Institute of Technology. The following papers, which were regarded as typical of Nikola Tesla's writings and thoughts in the period of 1925 to 1942, were removed for the purpose of record and listed below in random order in which they were found, together with a brief individual abstract. Possibilities of Electrostatic Generators An updated article probably written about 1934 discussing the possibilities as a source of high-voltage DC power of the Van de Graaff type of electrostatic belt generator. 
The article states correctly the electrostatic principle is implored in this device and points out that suck generators are not suitable for commercial high-powered applications, though of undoubted scientific value. Tesla's wireless tower erected in 1902 on Long Island is stated in its memorandum to have charged to 30 million volts. Exhibit B Reactive Force of Glycerin and Dynamite an undated memorandum involving some calculation of the explosive power of certain compounds and then deviating to a discussion of the possibility of transmitting power by mechanical vibrations along the Earth's crust. Exhibit C, Process of Degasifying, Refining, and Purifying Metals. A 40-page memorandum probably written about 1930 dealing with the above subject and proposing new theories of capillarity and surface tension. These correspondence indicated that this has been subjected to various industrial companies. Exhibit D, replying to Antorg regarding the generation of high voltage and acceleration of charged particles. This document dated the 8th of November 1935 answers questions raised by Soviet engineers and scientists regarding Tesla's proposal of Ray. From this answer, it's deduced that the proposal concerned the generation of high voltage by electrostatic means. These means consisted of a high-voltage terminal presumably supported by an insulating column and charged by a gaseous charge conveying medium passing between ground and terminal. The ideas contained in these notes are fairly similar to the Boltzkenware electrostatic generator methods proposed by Van de Graaff and do not appear to offer any unusual features. Exhibit E, Art of Telegeodynamics or Art of Producing Terrestrial Motions at Distance. This document in the form of a letter dated 12th of June 1940 to the Westinghouse Electric and Manufacturing Company proposes a method for the transmission of large amounts of power over vast distances by means of mechanical vibration on the Earth's crust. The source of power is a mechanical or electromechanical device bolted to some rocky protuberance and importing power at a resonance frequency of the Earth's crust. The proposed scheme appears to be completely visionary and unworkable. Westinghouse's reply indicates their polite rejection of the idea. There are some however that believe these documents are not telling us everything and that there's a possibility some of Tesla's work and inventions are being held back. All across America are reports of creatures known as the Skinwalker and the Wendigo. These mysterious creatures have allegedly been encountered for years and what's interesting is that many of the eyewitness reports seem to be very similar to each other. Some have suggested that this is proof that what people are seeing is genuine and that there exists a creature out there in our world that we're not able to explain. So today, we'll be taking a look at the Skinwalker and the Wendigo and trying to figure out what people are actually encountering. The Skinwalker is said to be a humanoid that's able to change its appearance on command. The Navajos are a Native American people who would go into detail about these mysterious creatures. They would tell stories of how they were able to perform superhuman feats and that if one was nearby, it would be wise to avoid it. However, others have said that if it's at the point where it's already reached you, you have no chance of getting away. Skinwalkers are believed to be individuals of whom underwent a curse ritual and gained the ability to shapeshift into a wolf-like creature whenever they choose. This term comes from that of old Navajo legends that claim that when a tribal member committed a social taboo, something otherwise not accepted by the tribe as a whole of which would cause the tribe to come together to perform a ritual that would curse the person. This would cause the said person into becoming part animal and cursing them to live a life of solitude. Being forced to change from their human form into a large animalistic form whenever their insatiable desires began to take control. In the Navajo language, the word skinwalker translates to he who walks in all forms, and this is for good reason. Those who have encountered these creatures have said not only do they possess the ability to transform into a variety of creatures, but that they're able to move extremely fast in all forms. What's interesting though is that although these legends had been around for many years, it's only been in the last 20 years or so that these stories have been brought to the public's attention. Those who have visited the Navajo region have reported seeing bizarre-looking creatures, some of which resembled the mythical skinwalker. This isn't the only place that houses skinwalkers, though. Skinwalker Ranch was named after the numerous encounters with these creatures. Interestingly, many believe that skinwalkers are at the center of the strange reports surrounding the Skinwalker Ranch, as many of the creatures described in the numerous encounters held by people are that of lodge bees. 
These have been reported as walking on their hind legs and possessing many powers that a skinwalker is believed to have. One such power is the ability to mimic any animal noise, as well as the ability to sound like any person that it hears speaking. This strange ability is being heard by numerous witnesses of whom claim to have seen a large moving beast in the area, as well as hearing a number of large animal calls shortly after, as well as their own voice being echoed back to them after they called out in fear. What's worrying is it's said that if you hear these sounds, the skinwalker is stalking you. Even more worrying is that most people celebrate when they hear the sounds getting fainter, thinking that the creature is getting further away. But this is not the case. It's said the skinwalker does this on purpose in order for you to think you're getting away from it. Then when you begin to relax, that's when it strikes. Not many people have heard the sounds and live to tell the tale. As it's reported every year people go missing in these regions because of the skinwalkers. These claims, sightings and legends have led to the entire area being known as the Skinwalker Ranch. With many believing the local native or American legends involving the creature were told in truth. And they were told about a population of such cursed people transforming in the region and having a small population throughout the area. This has led many researchers to study the area, as well as a team of researchers funded by James Randi himself, to purchase the ranch and begin a wide variety of tests and procedures. This was to uncover the strange encounters and mountain of evidence surrounding it. What's odd is that people have made the connection between skinwalkers and mysterious lines. Those who have lived on the ranch have said that when one of these creatures is sighted, shortly after there will be mysterious lights in the sky. In fact, a previous owner said that during these encounters he thought both the skinwalkers and lights were working together. The first ever reported sighting of an unidentified flying object was reported by the family that lived on the ranch. That had originally believed the craft to be some form of top-secret military project of immense size. According to the family, they said the unidentified flying object was as large as several football fields and was covered in a number of strange blinking lines. The morning after the sighting, the entire ground of the ranch where the unidentified flying object was claimed to have rested, was left with a massive depression in the area that gave a perfect imprint of the ship and the soil beneath it. Other pieces of evidence surrounding extraterrestrial intervention was that of hearing voices speak in a strange language seemingly coming out of thin air. An alien-like creature standing more than seven feet tall besides a large floating glowing orb, as well as cows completely disappearing out of thin air and reappearing the next day. In fact, one story tells of a cow going missing after there being bright lights in the sky. The owners didn't think much of it as it happened several times a year. What's sad about this though is that they didn't see the animal again and were sad to think of what happened to it. However, on this particular occasion, this one cow disappeared and then returned several months later, as if nothing had happened. Some people put forward the idea the cow had escaped and that it was living on the nearby land. But the owners said this couldn't have been the case as several people went out in search of the cow and couldn't find anything. Not only this, but the whole property was covered in fencing and there's no way the animal could have gotten out. One of the more mysterious claims was that during the night a strange bouncing ball of light had come to the house and was bouncing around the property. This would lead their three dogs to break free and begin chasing the balls away from the house, only for them to never return again after seemingly vanishing from thin air, along with the bouncing ball of light. Unfortunately for the owners, their reports would go largely ignored by respectable researchers and would leave their property to becoming a hotspot sighting area for UFO enthusiasts. They would journey to the ranchers all hours of the day and harass the owners by invading their personal space and setting up camping equipment in the hopes of coming across extraterrestrial contact. One of the owners said the following about what they'd witnessed. And then shortly after these portals opened, mysterious objects would fly out of them. I was able to see these crafts exit the portals and then fly around the property for a while before returning. There must be something here that interests them as we're always seeing them. If I had to guess, I would say the crafts are around 40 to 60 feet in diameter. Mysterious humanoids have also been witnessed on the ranch. These human-like creatures are believed to be around 6 to 7 feet tall. And have a dark presence. Some have suggested they are similar to the men in black. What's odd though is the fact that these entities seem to appear out of nowhere. 
People who have lived or visited the ranch have encountered these mysterious creatures. It's believed they are able to read the minds and even communicate through thoughts. Numerous people have come forward and said that while being near the ranch they have seen these strange people. One person said they encountered a strange man when they was around half a mile from the ranch. They stopped to ask him for directions, but he didn't answer. He just stared at them until they drove off. Another person had a similar encounter. A man approached them as they was parked up close to the ranch. He stood in front of their car and started to make strange noises. The people described it as a crackling noise. They found this person strange so decided to move on. These stories all follow a similar theme. Whoever these people are, they don't seem to like people being near the ranch. And almost always try to get them to move on. One of the most highly debated cryptists of cryptozoology is that of the Wendigo, a North American monster that creates a large dividing line amongst the cryptozoological community on whether or not it was completely fabricated or a true witness account. Though the Wendigo is often being compared to that of the jackalope, there are many that swear the existence of the Wendigo is not a fabrication of any kind. According to witness accounts, the Wendigo is described as being somewhere between the size of an average person to be more than 15 feet tall and have a physical appearance similar to that of a skeleton frame, with gray skin, sunken eyes, large yellow fangs and a long slimy tongue. The legend of the Wendigo dates as far back as 40,000 years. These legends would tell of the creatures disguising themselves as a human in the hopes of being led back to the human villages. If it was eventually taken back to the village, it would immediately begin to devour anyone in sight. Today, no such evidence of the creature exists, and every video recording of such a monster has proven to be inconclusive or completely forged. Still, despite the lack of evidence, the Wendigo is one of the most popular North American monsters and continues to make his existence known all throughout Canada. People to this day have reported encountering the creature especially when venturing out into the wilderness where there's not many people around. Interestingly, some have made the connection between this creature and the skinwalker, saying that perhaps what people are seeing is the same creature. Some have compared the two and say they do share some of the same characteristics. Going back a few years ago, a household in Canada experienced something strange. One of the residents said the following about the event. Here in Canada, I have Inuits in a place called the Northwest Territories. They are native and have a lot of weird tales from their community. They have families spread all over the North, lots of whom are in Alberta as well and will play into this story. On this particular occasion, it was a typical winter night. This happened around 10 years ago in my Inuit's grandparents' house. Due to it being this time of year, it was very dark and way too cold to be outside. It was at least minus 40 degrees Celsius. Everyone was hanging out. People were watching TV and the kids were playing. A typical family evening. However, this was interrupted by a knocking at the door. The knocking was hard and persistent. This was immediately strange as they live way outside any real towns with kilometers between neighbors. And unannounced guests were almost unheard of. Their grandparents were visibly concerned and told them not to answer the door. The knocking became harder and the guests began to speak, loudly stating they were an auntie and had been invited over. The kids wanted to answer the door to see their auntie, and apparently it sounded exactly like her. So their grandpa had to block the kids from going near the door and told them to get away from the door and the windows as well. The knocking became pounding and the guests started yelling and screaming to be let in. Eventually it stopped and the guest was gone. The next morning there was no tracks outside in the snow, and no signs of Iroquois had been in the area. This auntie lived in Alberta and had made no plans to visit. Nothing happened after that, but it's something that does happen in these areas. Believe it or not, Wendigo is a major piece of folklore in that family. And they refuse to talk about it for fear of drawing one in. The police do incredible work and they're usually the first ones on the scene. This however is there to some officers experience things they can't explain. One of the places where officers are usually seen strange things is that of the Navajo Reservation of the American Southwest. This location is known for mysterious and legendary stories and the police here have encountered some strange things. One of the issues though is when police report these types of encounters. 
they can be mocked and looked down upon. However, the police at Navajo Reservation have a different view on things. They take these sightings and encounters seriously and will try to look into and understand each report. After all, for the last few decades many strange stories have been coming out of this region. So it's clearly not just them that are encountering something strange. The NLR gives people somewhere to go for such cases. They have allowed people to talk to them and have their cases investigated. One case was reported as the following. An unnamed person was driving late at night when they encountered something strange. Their headlights were reflecting a creature's eyes. However, this was an animal they had never seen before. As they drove towards the creature, it started running towards the car. The person put the car into reverse and tried to get out of there as quickly as they could. They said the creature looked to be humanoid in appearance but was only around two feet tall. To this day, they have no idea what they encountered. Other officers have come forward and explained that it's hard to come forward with these types of encounters, saying that they get judged by their peers and even, in some cases, are at risk of losing their jobs. It's one of the main reasons they don't like to talk about what they've encountered. What's interesting though is that law enforcement are usually the first people in the scene and it's not out of the ordinary for them to see things that are hard to explain. Another officer said the following about their encounter, while driving through the Navajo, I encountered something I've never seen before. It was around 11.30 at night and there was nobody around. In fact, my car headlights were the only ones around for miles. 25 minutes into my journey, I noticed something weird in my rearview mirror. As I slowed down to get a better look at what it was, I could see a large humanoid running towards my car. If I had to guess, I would say this thing was over 6 feet in height and had really pale skin. The only way I can describe it is that it looks like a really thin tall pale humanoid. I've never seen anything like this before. This thing was also running abnormally fast. Because I was alone, the last thing I wanted to do was stop as I had no backup. So I just sped off leaving the creature behind. To this day, I still wonder about what I encountered that night. Over the years, many people have reported seeing these skinwalkers. Each report is slightly different. However, most of them follow a similar theme. Seeing a large humanoid that doesn't usually look like a human and that is able to travel fast. This person encounters something strange while with their friends. They said the following, while driving near Marlboro, me and my friends encountered something we couldn't explain. This all started when we decided to go for a drive. After I passed my test, this was one of our favorite things to do. On this particular occasion, I picked them up around 9.30 p.m. and at this point it was already dark due to it being a cold November night. After driving down country roads, we decided to pull over near an old abandoned farmer's building. We'd been here a few times before and it was a well-known hangout spot. When we arrived, we took a torch with us and made our way down to the building. Although it was creepy looking, none of us had experienced anything here until this particular night. We were here for around 15 minutes when we started to hear noises. I was the bravest out of all of my friends and suggested the noises were animals. We were surrounded by dense woodland and a small road. However, every so often we did hear noises in the forest. These noises were coming from behind the building so we could hear them quite clearly. As me and my friends made our way back there, we decided to shine our torch into the forest. As we did, we saw two reflective yellow eyes. This immediately put us all on edge and we started to get worried. There was nothing close by if we did get into any trouble. This thing then started to stand up and make its way towards us. As it did, we got a good view of it. The creature was over six foot tall, bold and had pale white skin. Its skin was also very wrinkly and it looked as though it had a very fine coat of hair. We'd never seen anything like this before. It was like something from a horror movie. As we all stood there frozen, we watched this thing let out a loud screech noise. As it did, we all ran as fast as we could back to my car. I drove as fast as I could. The next day we brought up what had happened last night, but none of us could come to a logical conclusion as to what we saw. What we described sounds like a human but this thing didn't look like a human. It was completely hairless and was almost alien-like. It was also tall and looked as though its arms were too long for its body. We have no idea what happened that night. 
Unfortunately, during these events most people are caught off guard. So we're only left with testimonies of those affected. Another person had this to say about their encounter. Six or seven years ago, I was at my family's cottage with my family. My dad, my little sister and I went back for ice cream and came back after dark. I was in the back right seat and my little sister was on the other side. We pulled into the cottage and I got out my door. But I was startled to see a beige figure standing upright behind my shoulder. I stared at it for a second and then it quickly backed up and ran to the front of the car. This was where my dad and sister were waiting for me to go inside. I asked them if they had just been standing behind me to scare me. However, they looked at me strange and said no. This thing was dark and I could only see the silhouette of whatever it was. For some reason, it struck me as dog-like. This was an era with lots of Native American lore and history. I was reading a book about cryptids a couple of days later and saw a picture of a skinwalker. It looked very similar to what I saw, except this figure was my height not the size of a full-grown man. All of the reports seemed to point to this creature being a tall humanoid. With that being said, no definitive proof of this creature exists. Meaning for now we only have a Winnie's testimonies to go by. For the last few years, Tom DeLong has expressed his interest in unidentified flying objects. He said that he's been fascinated with them for years. While on tour, he would read books that explored the possibility of extraterrestrials, and since then, he's been hooked. Recently, Tom came forward on Instagram and said that he'd witnessed an unidentified aerial phenomenon. He said the following about his encounter. So last night I get a text from somebody that there was an unidentified air phenomena right off the beach where I live. I ran to my balcony and saw it split into two pieces and raise vertically. I grabbed Marie, jumped in my truck and went straight down to the beach. We were the only ones on the beach last night as this light disappeared. Reappeared broke into three pieces and stacked vertically. With one little red dot flying around the top and then disappearing for the rest of the evening. This video doesn't show much, but we were up quite late watching the light dance, about half a mile to a mile off the beach. It was huge and it was fiery orange. Of course, I called up Lou Elizondo as I was there, and he was telling me all the things I was supposed to do with the location, geographic details, weather, altitude and distance. Of course, I was completely worthless when it came to these details, but it was a big deal. Lou checked immediately and there was no flights in the area except the one I had my eye on the entire time. No military, no boats and a bunch of hovering lights that were stacked on top of each other. It was wild. Who knows? Various people were impressed with the footage, even coming forward and saying that they had seen similar objects. Recently, it was announced by Tom DeLong and his To The Stars Academy that they were working with the US government in regards to their unidentified aerophenomenal discovery. The company has also said they've brought on some leading researchers on AI and that they're working on a new service. To The Stars Academy posted the following. As part of our AI initiatives, we've built a compelling service for post-ingestion and analysis processing, which marks an instance authentic if it passes human and machine learning analysis. These datasets will help us analyze future ingested media and clean up unnecessary data. Tom then went on to say the following, this is a very exciting technology we've built. It can be used for numerous defense requirements as well as its primary mission to track unidentified L phenomenon. Further saying the following, I'm proud to be collaborating with the US government on the unidentified air phenomenon issue. It's been a lifelong dream to be sitting in this seat, where I and my team at the To The Stars Academy can help understand the issue. First, we start with the US Army testing our anomalous material, purportedly from an unidentified air phenomenon crash. Although this is great news in the sense that Tom and his company are making connections, others have worried about the path he's going down. It's important to remember though that a UFO is simply an object that someone cannot identify at that moment in time. As of right now, Tom has said it's an exciting time for him and his company. All over the world there have been reports of cryptids. One of the issues people face when they encounter these creatures is skeptics and criticism. With that being said, patterns do emerge in regards to some of these creatures. Normally reserved for the deepest of the waters and the furthest of the jungles, these creatures seem to just appear out of nowhere. 
They are hidden creatures whose existence is yet to be proven scientifically. Living in folklore with believers trying hard to prove their existence. The skinwalker is one that many have said they've encountered. The legend of the shape-shifting entity commonly known as skinwalkers has been largely dismissed as a joke. Skinwalkers are people who can transform themselves into any creature of their choice, and most of the time they are seen as wolves, owls, eagles, crows, foxes or coyotes. Some of them can steal a person's face and appear to look like them. It's said that if a person locks eyes with a skinwalker, they can absorb their bodies and control their actions. They are also believed to have the ability to enchant corpse powers and use it to poison dust on their victims. Even though unscientific, the skinwalker is deeply rooted in Native American legends. America had its first experience with the Navajo skinwalker legend back in 1996 when an article was published in the Desert News. Detailing a traumatizing experience that a family from Utah had with a mysterious creature. It was said it was responsible for mutilations of cattle, sightings of UFOs, disappearances and appearances of crop circles. According to the article, the most distressing encounter that the family had reported happened on a night around one and a half years after relocating to the estate. Terry Sherman, the father of the family, was having a night walk with his dogs when he saw a strange wall which was almost three times bigger than a normal wolf and had glowing red eyes. It stood with confidence even after Sherman fired three shots at close range, which made Sherman run for hiding. Sherman's family was not the only ones who were scared on that particular ranch. After moving out, many other subsequent owners experienced similar eerie encounters, and even today the ranch has been named the Skinwalker Ranch and has become a hub to research paranormal activity. Some cultures believe the skinwalkers are born from a kind-hearted medicine man who abused native magic for evil and was then granted evil powers. These stories differ from one tradition to the other, with a common theme being the power of transforming into other creatures. According to other cultures, one can become a skinwalker after committing a taboo. Most descriptions depict skinwalkers to be physically animalistic even when in human form. From reports they are almost unkillable and can only be killed with a bullet or sword that has been asserted with white ash. Not much is known about these creatures since the Navajo are against discussing it with outsiders and sometimes even among themselves. Traditions suggest that mentioning them not only brings bad luck but also increases the chances of their appearance. Robert Spigolo, a businessman and UFO enthusiast purchased the ranch in 1996 at $200,000 and he established the National Institute for Discovery Science and installed substantial surveillance. Bigelow and his team of researchers ultimately experienced more than 100 incidents in this property, but could not amass enough evidence that would be credible for scientific publication. Bigelow later saw the ranch in 2016 at $4.5 million. Despite this, Skinwalker's studies have become more and more sophisticated and secretive. While it's hard to discern the truthfulness of these accounts, the descriptions are mostly similar. A four-legged creature with a disturbingly disfigured human face, with orange-red shining eyes. They are also reportedly fast creatures with hellish sounds. This leads us on to a similar creature which has become known as the Dogman. Many people have heard of the Sasquatch, but very few are aware that a more terrifying cryptid stalks the North American forest. The Michigan Dogman is a werewolf-like creature that was first sighted in Wexford, Michigan. The Dogman legend became popular in 1987 after Steve Cook, who worked at WTCM-FM in Michigan, recorded a song about the Dogman and its sightings that had been reported. This attracted calls from listeners who gave accounts of their encounters of a similar creature. The first reported account of the Michigan Dogman was in Wexford, Michigan in 1997. When two loggers spotted a creature which they described to have a human body with the head of a dog. Back in 1938, Robert Fortnett from Paris, Michigan got attacked by wild dogs, and he alleged that one of the dogs was walking on two legs. A night guard while patrolling a manufacturing plant in Michigan in 1961 saw a strange figure, which he initially thought was a human until he saw features that looked like a dog's. He was able to quickly take a photograph of the beast. The photos have been studied by various individuals but as of today remain a mystery. More efforts have been made in the investigation and study of the Dogman phenomenon, including podcasts and YouTube videos about encounters with the Dogman. 
Even though many believe that the dogmen is real, skeptics argue that there is no scientific evidence to back up its existence. As is the case with many cryptids. Most of the evidence for the existence of the dog man is full of controversial images and videos, plus many years of accounts from eyewitnesses. While skeptics believe it's just a myth brought to life by a 1987 song, others believe that it's some paranormal beast that has been wandering our planet for thousands of years, and that every so often it does make itself known to humans. There have been various interesting tracks discovered all over Michigan, some as recent as 2009 which point to the existence of the dogman. Some of them closely resemble the prints of a dog, but are far much larger than those of a normal dog. One of the sightings by a sibling to an official in the government in 2007 described the dogman as a dark, upright wolf, around six feet in height standing next to a dead deer. A print discovered in the area measured around eight inches across today's sightings of the dogman and reports of this mysterious beast are catching more attention from the mainstream media, and hopefully they may shed some light on the existence of the dogman. Another creature that's said to be similar to these creatures is that of the Wendigo. As the folklore goes, the Wendigo was initially a hunter, and on one very cold winter his extreme hunger made him a cannibal. Immediately after he devoured the flesh of a fellow human, he became a man-beast roaming in the forest looking for more humans to feed on. This story is common among the natives, with the details varying depending on the narrator. Those who have encountered the Wendigo say it's related to Bigfoot, while other reports compare it to werewolves. Because the Wendigo is known to be a creature of the cold weather, it's been mostly sighted in Canada and the colder northern states like Minnesota. As the 20th century began, the local people blamed the mysterious disappearance of people to the attacks by the Wendigo. The Wendigo is said to be between 6 and 15 feet in height. With a slender body which is perhaps because they never satisfy their cannibal desires. It's said to be always hungry until they find another person to eat. According to Nathan Carlson, the Wendigo has big sharp claws and eyes as big as an owl's. Others describe the creature as a bony figure with a skin tone like ash. Different versions of this creature's tale say different stories about its agility and speed. With some saying it's very fast and can walk over long distances even during very cold winters. I would say the skinwalker has a haggard walk, which implies that it has no speed. Unlike other carnivorous animals that pursue prey to capture and eat them, the Wendigo lures people away from civilization by mimicking human voices and feast on them once isolated. Most of the sightings of the Wendigo happened between 1800 and 1920, since then, only a few sightings of the Wendigo have been reported. Whether one believes in the Wendigo sightings or not, this may not just be any other folklore aimed at scaring people. It's historically significant in many indigenous cultures. This legend has been associated with problems in real life, like selfishness, violence, and greed. It's also been associated with taboos against bad behavior. Stories of the Wendigo were once taken as illustrations of the nature of violence against the Native American people who told the stories. Ironically though, the stories may represent the response of the native people to the violence shown to them by the people who are not indigenous. Anthropologists believe the Wendigo concept came about after the native people encountered the Europeans. Some anthropologists believe the stories of the Wendigo are associated with stress among the Native Americans. Due to the dwindling resources and fears of starvation, the tensions that was building up among the Native Americans that caused such accusations could be compared to the fears that came after the Salamwich trials. Just like most legendary creatures, the Wendigo remains a mystery today. It's been referenced many times and has featured in TV shows. Interestingly, there are some lakes named after the creature. For instance, Wendigo Lake in Wisconsin. And Lake Wendigo, Minnesota. Those believing the Wendigo sightings think the creature might still be out there in the forest and beneath the man-eating creature is just a human person who was initially a hunter. Researchers and scientists have done a great job at unraveling some of the universe's biggest secrets. However, there have been some anomalies and signals that researchers haven't been able to explain. Space is one place that humans will never fully explore. It's anyone's guess as to what's out there and with it being home to over hundreds of billions of planets, it's not crazy to say there could be all walks of life inhabiting various planets. 
One recent discovery was made by the OSIRIS-RX spacecraft while orbiting the asteroid Bennu. It was announced on 3 December 2018 that a NASA probe had completed its 1.2 billion mile or 2 billion kilometer journey to arrive at the asteroid Bennu. Researchers said the next goal of the probe was to begin a survey of the asteroid. The spacecraft would start flyovers of the asteroids north and south. The probe will get close to the asteroid as well. It's been announced it will fly around 4 miles above Bennu during each flyover. This asteroid isn't just a piece of rock floating in space. It's one of our solar system's most ancient relics. It's been floating in space for more than 4.5 billion years. Scientists have said this rocky body formed within 10 million years of our solar system's formation. Scientists have theorized that Bennu likely broke off from a much larger carbon-rich asteroid around 700 million to 2 billion years ago. Its original formation was likely in the main asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. NASA researchers there have just said they've discovered something they didn't expect to. It turns out scientists were expecting Bennu to be made of sand, but instead it's made of rocks. The lander was programmed to pick up the SAMIC substance. But it's caused a slight problem to the mission due to the terrain. The lander in question is around 20 feet in length and has the ability to travel over 19,000 miles an hour. With that being said though, this recent discovery doesn't mean the mission is over. Lead researchers have said the lander will be able to cope with the terrain. One of the scientists said the following. The extraordinary in-flight performance to date demonstrates that we'll be able to meet the challenges that the rugged surface of Bennu presents. That extraordinary performance encompasses not only the spacecraft and instruments, but also the team that continues to meet every challenge that Bennu throws at us. On the 18th of June 2019, NASA said the lander managed to get even closer and capture a photograph of the asteroid at only 0.4 miles away. NASA have also announced this asteroid could one day make contact with our planet. The space rock which is 492 meters or 1,614 feet has a 1 in 2,700 chance of impacting Earth. They said that Bennu will pass Earth at around 750,000 kilometers or 460,000 miles on the 23rd of September 2060. It's also been said that Bennu could potentially be mined for water in the future. Due to all the things that Bennu's got going for it, researchers have said that it's very likely more missions will be carried out here in the near future. Interestingly, during the most recent visit to Bennu by the OSIRIS-REx, one of the instruments on board managed to capture something that surprised researchers. Interestingly, this object was that of a black hole. The RExus managed to capture a glimpse of a large black hole. The flare in question is said to have occurred around 30,000 light-years away, and it could be seen as a distant flash. The mission wasn't there to discover new objects, but rather just to study the asteroid. However, the instruments were able to show researchers we really don't know what's out there in space. One of the researchers said the following about the discovery. We set out to train students how to build and operate space instruments. It turns out the greatest lesson is to be open to discovering the unexpected. Brandon Allen, a Harvard research scientist and student supervisor, was the first who spotted the source in the REXIS data and went on to say the following. Our initial check showed no previously catalogued object in that position in space. It's fair to say that black holes are one of the most interesting objects in space, and it seems that every year we learn a little more about these mysterious giants. Another interesting discovery researchers have made is that of gravitational waves sent out from a black hole. Our universe holds a massive amount of galaxies along with an even more countless number of mysteries. Over the years, black holes have caused much speculation in the scientific community. Though these findings have made scientists question the very nature of reality, these incredible discoveries of supermassive black holes have helped us to better understand the true nature of our universe. Recently astrophysicists come forward and said that they've detected mysterious gravitational waves. It was then put forward that they were created by a black hole when it collided with a neutron star. The theory behind black holes is more than just shrouded in mystery, and it was not until a man by the recognizable name of Albert Einstein helped humanity to realize that space and time interwoven and connected in something we refer to as the fabric of space-time. 
mathematical theory of mass then being able to stretch and distort this fabric similar to that of a rock resting on a cloth led to an innovative idea. When the scientists picked up on the gravitational waves they stated that it can allow them to study astronomical events occurring in the universe. The researchers said that what they were seeing was the merging of a black hole and a neutron star. At the moment more study is needed. But if this can be confirmed it's thought this could help us to confirm that black holes and neutron stars can coexist in binary systems. One of the researchers said the following about the event. It's like listening to somebody whisper a word in a busy canv. It can be difficult to make out the word or even be sure if someone whispered at all. What some people may not be aware of is how big these black holes are. For example, there's a black hole that's known as SDSSJ, and this black hole is so massive that it's more than 12 billion times the mass of our sun. Researchers began to wonder how could such a large singularity form if our universe is believed to be only 13 billion years old. Today, the black hole continues to be one of the largest, youngest black holes out in space, and it's believed to be even larger in nature if we were to visit it. It would be another 13 billion years before any information could catch up and show us its true size. This black hole however is incredibly far away. One light year is around 5.8 trillion miles or 9.5 trillion kilometers. So it's fair to say we won't be able to get near it anytime soon. NASA's Hubble Space Telescope has detected a supermassive black hole that has made researchers question current theories of the universe. This new report states this black hole is approximately 250 million times heavier than our Sun and can be found at the center of the spiral galaxy NGC 3147 and is said to be over 140 million light years away from Earth. Incredibly, scientists have been able to observe a large accretion disk moving around the edge. What's confused scientists however is based on what we currently know about black holes. Such a disk shouldn't be found so close to a black hole of this size. One of the researchers said the following about the discovery. We thought this was the best candidate to confirm that below certain luminosities, the accretion disk doesn't exist anymore. What we saw was something completely unexpected. We found gas in motion producing features we can explain only as being produced by material rotating in a very thin disk and that this disk is very close to the black hole. This discovery was published in the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society. Lead author Stefano Bianchi went on to say the following, the predictions of current models of gas dynamics in very faint active galaxies clearly failed. The disk will give scientists the opportunity to test Albert Einstein's theory of relativity. The collision between the black hole and the neutron star was picked up in August and scientists observing gravitational waves may have reached a huge milestone. On the 14th of August 2019, giant detectors in the US and Italy picked up on gravitational waves, and these were set off when a black hole and a neutron star collided around 900 researchers have seen a lot of merger of black holes and neutron stars, but never with each other. This could provide some insight to neutron stars, which is made up of the densest matter in the cosmos. This observation was made by LIGO and Virgo near Pisa, Italy, which holds around 400 scientists. Gravitational waves are generated when really massive objects collide with each other. To measure these waves, scientists made and developed a huge L-shaped optical instrument called interferometers. Interferometers have arms that are several kilometers long. Gravitational waves were first detected in 2015 when LEGO researchers witnessed a collision between two massive black holes which were dozens of times bigger than the Sun. Black holes are purely made up of gravitational waves that are generated when a star collapses. In 2017 merge of between two neutrons were detected. These were gigantic nuclei atom left behind by the star that are too small to make a black hole. Now recently the merge of between a black hole and a nuclei have been detected. A black hole shredding a neutron would reveal how stiff neutral matter is. It would be a great help in knowing the structure of neutron stars. Although theorists are not sure how frequent the merger between a black hole and a neutron star occurs or how they form, researchers show that they're more likely to form if traveling in a fixed path from colliding, rather than randomly wandering here and there and somehow finding each other. The recently new signal was particularly strong and the detectors were able to pinpoint the location in the sky. 
This shows how much these detectors have improved and can work efficiently. As there is no optical counterpart present, the identification of the objects depends entirely on their masses, which the researchers find through gravitational waves. Many scientists have argued and are debating on the mass of a neutron. Many have agreed that a neutron cannot exceed the weight of 2.2 solar masses. If the astronomers are not able to find an optical counterpart, then LIGO and VIGO researchers have to rely on gravitational waves to determine the nature of the colliding objects. It's challenging but researchers are excited and on the verge of a scientific breakthrough. As of right now, scientists are carrying out more tests. Scientists have said that there's unending discoveries waiting to be made out in the universe, and every year we learn something new. Most of these discoveries aren't fully understood. But the world's best scientists and researchers have done a great job so far at unraveling some of the universe's greatest discoveries. One of the most fascinating things that makes the ocean quite mysterious for us humans is the fact that 95% of it is still unexplored. Despite the history of sailing going back centuries, we have still only been able to scratch the surface of the water world that accounts for more than 70% of the Earth's surface. We have been sailing on the surface of the ocean for centuries now, but we've only started discovering the depths of the ocean during the past couple of decades. That humans could not imagine reaching the depths of the ocean and had no idea what the oceanic floor looked like. Over the years, countless people have tried to brave the oceans and even in the modern day people on boats are still disappearing or washing up under mysterious circumstances. Some of these are so mysterious they've gone on to spawn various legends and tales. One of the most chilling is perhaps the Arung Medan. In June 1947, a Dutch ship named Arung Medan was sailing along the Straits of Malacca when it sent out a shocking signal indicating that the captain and the entire crew of the ship would end. After the first message, a number of random Morse code sequences were received that could not be deciphered. The last message was translated into two simple but shocking words, I die. The grim SOS message of the Orang Miden was picked up by Dutch and British listening posts situated near Malaysia and Sumatra. The listening posts worked together to find the location of the Orang Medan and alerted nearby ships. Silver Star, which was an American merchant ship, reached Arung Medan, only to find the vessel in nearly perfect condition. Silver Star's crew members shouted Arung Medan, but they did not get any response. Finally, after shouting and waving for a long time, a search and rescue team was sent to Arung Medan. When the team stopped on the ship's deck, what they saw was something only to be seen in nightmares. The entire crew of the Arung Medan was lying dead. Their eyes were wide open with fear. Their mouths were wide open as if they were screaming when they died. And their arms were spread wide as if they were trying to stop someone. The captain of the ship was also found in the exact same position. All the crew members were present on their designated places and rooms on the ship. But they were all dead and their faces had the same horrific expression. As the crew members of the American ship were exploring the Arung Medan, it started sinking and the rescuers had to leave the ship along with its dead bodies in order to save their lives. Some reports claim that the Arung Medan exploded after a while due to the explosives placed on the ship. Regardless, the unlucky ship sank to the bottom of the ocean along with the remains of its captain and crew. What happened at the Arung Medan remains one of the biggest oceanic mysteries. Some researchers have claimed that the crew members died due to the release of carbon monoxide on the gym, and the subsequent explosion was also a result of the gas, while other theories hold pirates responsible for the horrific tragedy. There is no record or evidence that could support either of the theory, and the Arung Medan is likely to remain a mystery forever. When standing on the shores of beaches from around the world, encounters with ghost ships have left many wondering if darker forces are responsible for the terrible face of those who have gone missing at sea. Some of these encounters include claims of seeing apparitions in the distance, seemingly floating in the sky, an effect known as atmospheric refraction that has led many to not understand the nature of the horizon. Others, however, have reported sightings impossible to explain with scientific means such as the encounters seen on the shores of Chesapeake Bay. Though there are a collection of rumors and myths surrounding the area regarding potential hidden and buried treasures, locals have also claimed that if someone stays there for a prolonged period of time, they will begin to notice a large ghostly image of the port beginning to manifest. 
This has led many to have reported spotting ghostly ships out past the harbor, and rumors of getting near the ship have spread further legends of wedding spirits inhabiting them. It does appear however that such claims of ghost ships manifesting as large ships coming close to the shores have arisen in many different areas around the world, and are not just described as ships with completely abandoned crews, but rather as large glowing spirits that take on the form of bones and the wailing undead that inhabit them. Back on the 11th of October in 1771, a whaling crew had come across what they believed to be a ghost ship sailing nearby. The crew sailed closer to the ship and noticed a strange sight. The ship appeared to have been completely iced over, with its sails torn and icicles protruding from every direction of the jimp. This led to the captain of the whaling ship to order a boarding party to journey onto the jimp and to assess the situation of what had occurred. It was at this point that the waiting crew became incredibly frightened. Upon boarding the ship, they described an impossible to understand sight as they realized that every crew member of the frozen ship was still on board, seemingly frozen in place. Their bodies were not in positions commonly seen when examining people of whom froze to death as they appeared to have been frozen in the middle of their activities. Even the captain of the ship appeared to have been frozen in the middle of writing down a journal entry and still had a pen in hand. As the boarding party continued searching the ship, they became increasingly frightened and so quickly tried to grab the log books written by the ship's captain, only to later realize that the middle of the log book had frozen solid and fallen out, leaving only the first log entry and the last log entry for researchers to piece together what happened. According to the logs, the ship had been stuck in the ice of the Arctic, leading researchers to believe that somehow the ship must have become dislodged and floated on 3D. Though how it would end up on the shores of Greenland will never be understood, and how the captain was in the position he was in is still a mystery. There have been many theories about ghost chims. Some theories point to sea pirates taking down crew members and stealing their belongings, to mysterious circumstances that can't be explained. However, all the theories have been dismissed because of lack of any credible evidence, and to this day no one can say for sure what happened to some of the most famous ghost ships in history. There is one theory that holds an unknown paranormal entity responsible for the ghost chims. It's believed that some mysterious paranormal entity resides in the deepest pockets in some of the most isolated islands in the world. And sometimes this paranormal entity preys on the crews of the ships that travel nearby. It's believed that it preys on the crew members until they pass away, and then leaves the ship to move on to the next one. Not only this, but it's said by some of the entity will ensure the ship reaches its destination, so that people can see what it's done. One of the most famous ghost ship stories is that of the Mary Celeste. It was an American merchant ship and on the 5th of December 1872, it was discovered deserted in the Atlantic Ocean near the Azores Islands. When Mary Celeste was discovered by a Canadian ship, it was under partial sail and still in sailworthy condition. The last entry into Mary Celeste's log was made 10 days before it was found. What happened to the crew of the Mary Celeste? Under what circumstances did the crew of the ship abandon it? Was there any paranormal entity that was responsible for the mysterious disappearance of the crew? These questions continue to baffle the historians. Most of the believers of the paranormal entity responsible for ghost ships point to the Mary Celeste and raise some very valid arguments to point to the presence of such an entity. It seems that because of how vast the ocean is, it's very likely there's many more ghost ships floating around our planet. Each of these interesting discoveries helps researchers to uncover what happened moments before these ships were abandoned or what happened to the crew members. Although researchers have done a great job at unraveling some of these mysteries, it seems there are still a few cases that remain unsolved. In some of these cases, the more information that's released, only more questions are put forward. For the past few years, I've tried to bring attention to anomalous creatures, items and occurrences that have been happening all around the world. As information surrounding these strange phenomena have continued to grow, impossible to predict parallels have begun to surface, begging for a much deeper interpretation of reports and how they all connect. This has led to a new idea I've been working on this channel, and it's going to be known as the ACIO Reports. These reports will feature an ACIO, an abbreviation of the term anomalous creatures, items and occurrences. 
These will include those that have captured the attention of our researchers of whom believe they can track, understand and research the theoretical makeup of such anomalous entities. Not only could this help to establish serious research efforts in fields otherwise completely ignored, but it would also help to propel the mystery of such entities into the forefront of natural science. Growing our understanding of the world around us. So many times in the past have incredible characters claimed impossible creature sightings and other fantastic phenomena, facing the blunt criticisms of people claiming their information was far from factual, only to be proven legitimate later down the line, with none of the credit. An example of such a report was made surrounding an elusive creature known as the African Unicorn, of which would later become a proven species now known as the Akapi, that many researchers have denied the existence to within the Congo. Another example is the existence of the ether, proved by Nikola Tesla with his advancements in radio wave technology, only to have the name be recognized as the electromagnetic spectrum despite Nikola Tesla naming it the ether, for its ether properties and ancient magic references. An effort made to delegitimize his claims of mysticism. So today, our first ACIO report will center around Organism 46b. For information surrounding Organism 46b can be discussed. The environmental context to the investigation must be thoroughly identified. The ports of Organism 46b area of habitation rest within that of Lake Vostok, located more than 700 feet beneath the glacial surface of the ice at its shallowest region and roughly 2,600 feet at its deepest region. It's at this depth that the ice from the Antarctic glaciers are under enough pressure to melt and form deep lakes. It's within one of these deep lakes known as Lake Vostok that the creature known as a supposedly leaked documents surrounding the first attempts made by Russian researchers back on the 5th of February in 2012, while drilling to the lake's surface made reference to the creature known as Organism 46b. The report itself was titled Organism 46b and detailed an incredibly bizarre story in which Russian researchers claimed to have encountered a massive colossal squint and that this creature resided in the lake and could release toxins into the water. Could squeeze itself down into small sizes, take on weird shames, change its physical colors and could cause a mild form of hypnotism. This was if a person began to stare at the creature for too long. Here are quotes from the supposed letter written by a man named Dr. Anton Padolga. We encountered Organism 46 beyond our first day. It disabled our radio which we later learned to our alarm was intentional. It's also able to paralyze prey from a distance of up to 150 feet by releasing its venom into the water. Tragically, my colleague and lifelong friend was killed this way. He treaded water wearing a blissful smile as the organism approached him. We watched helplessly as it used its arms to tear off its head then popped its remains into its mouth. It was as if it hypnotized him telepathically. It shaped itself into the form of a human diver. We thought it was one of our colleagues swimming towards us in scuba gear. By the time the closest scientist had realized what it was, it grabbed him and tore him to bits. Some variations of the legend claim that one of the tentacles of the creature had been chopped off, but that the severed tentacle later reanimated and strangled another member of the team. The legend ends claiming there are few surviving members of the expedition and that Russian officials captured the creature and tried to cover it up. Facts checking the story leads to a number of strange dead ends that come about in eras of documented factual events that otherwise should have been explored. Below is the complete timeline of the factual events of the late Vostok drilling expedition. Back in January of 2011, Russian scientists published a paper titled Vostok Subglacial Lake, details of Russian plans activities for drilling and sampling. One of the scientists, Valery Lurkin, worked at the Russian Antarctic Expedition, Arctic and Antarctic Research Institute at St. Petersburg. The document detailed the first and only public plan for a Russian expedition into Lake Vostok. Below is a portion from the introduction of the paper surrounding the expedition. The Russian Federation has developed a national project involving the drilling and sampling of Vostok's subglacial lake, East Antarctica. The objective is to explore this extreme arty environment using a variety of techniques to identify the forms and level of life that exists there. The project is funded by the Russian Federal Service Rashidromed. During the time of the published paper, the Russian Federation had yet to receive support from other nations of the world, as their borehole efforts were actively going against the Antarctic Treaty. 
With the United Kingdom and the United States petitioning the Russian Federation against borehole techniques due to environmental impact of the sealed lake. The opposition was due in part to the drilling techniques used by the Russian scientists, of which included the massive use of ferron and kerosene. This was to act as a lubricant for the drilling equipment, of which would immediately drain into the lake at the point of connection. Despite the Antarctic Treaty violation, the Russian Federation continued with their efforts. Within the published paper titled Vostok's Subglacial Lake Details of Russian Plans Activities for Drilling and Sampling, the scientists detailed a new piece of technology that would allow the borehole to use a transportation module that could be sent down into the borehole via new mechanisms and enter into their lake. A diagram for the technology claims that the module device in the borehole would only be 123 mm in diameter and impossible to send a diver into. However, given the secrecy of the project and the design used, such a technology could have been sealed up to send a research team into the borehole if made slightly larger. The technology also shows evidence of human-sized transportation modules. Given that the module designs had a height and width that would scale to fit a human body in a cylindrical tube of a height three times the tube's width. By October 2011, Valerie Luckin, the co-author of the published paper, was at the Antarctic Research Station. The expedition continued for several weeks up until the end of December, before issues the reasons for why Valery Lurkin first started his expedition in October of 2011 was due to October being the summer months for the Antarctic continent, keeping the location at its warmest for the expedition. The summer months only lasted from the beginning of October to February. However, after the 6th of February, the expedition must have been called off due to temperatures plummeting below 40 degrees Celsius. On the 20th of December, the Russian team claimed they had less than 5 meters left to drill before striking into the lake and were confident they were to meet their goal before the end of the Antarctic summer mums. It was shortly after this transmission, however, that the team would undergo a six-day radio silence, and this was for reasons not entirely understood. The encounter with the organism 46B led to the reported deaths of several top-secret Russian researchers. And so many believe this is why the document could have been leaked as a warning to other researchers in the area. Despite the far-fetched abilities of Organism 46B, reports appear to match the number of known cases of squid and octopus entities in the real world. In fact, every single ability mentioned by the letters the Organism 46B might possess appear to match many of the abilities found in deep-sea species of cephalopods and environments that would be similar to in light pressure and water quality to organism 46b. Below is a detailed writing surrounding the theoretical ability of telepathic traits within organism 46b and how the ability could be scientifically explained. Understanding the creature's ability to perform telepathic ability is both difficult and nearly impossible as the mechanisms for telepathy are still not entirely understood in the modern day. However, assumptions and data information surrounding numerous marine animals can be made as to what might be responsible for telepathic abilities in Organism 46b. It's important to note there is evidence and scientific endeavors in the realm of neuroscience, and the ability to translate the neurons near random electrical pulses, throids into readable information that can be displayed or understood. In fact, back in 1999, there was a research study by Dan Young at the University of Berkeley, California that successfully recreated what a cat observes in the physical world. This was done using pure data retrieved from visual neurons. The implications of this finding means that if someone could create a technology so sensitive and accurate in picking up electromagnetic fields or electrical stimuli one could remotely detect these occurrences coming from the human brain and work to gather the data required to translate your thoughts and brain signals into readable information. If we take this theory of data retrieval from the brains of animals by sensing electrical impulses and changes in the electromagnetic field, then there is evidence of evolution granting this ability amongst life here on Earth. Given the fact that organism 46b is expected to live its entire life in a completely dark underwater environment, it's possible that the species could have evolved a complex form of electroreception for its survival. Squids are one of the very few species in the world that can camouflage and change the pigments of their skin so rapidly they can make a variety of colors. Additionally, the glass squid species is capable of using bioluminescence in a deep-sea environment. 
This is to stun fish and seemingly hypnotize them to be consumed. Given the depth and lack of light deep within the underground Lake Vostok, it's of a high probability that if large marine animals were to exist within the trapped lake, they would also possess evolutionary abilities to generate bioluminescence. Bioluminescence tied with a squid's ability to alter the color of their pigments of their skin could create scissor-inducing colors and shapes that could temporarily cause an individual to become hypnotized or undergo a seizure if looking directly at the creature. This could explain the hypnotic effects as reported in the leaked documents surrounding the creature. Given the lack of bones or large deposits of cartilage within an octopus, the species is capable of squeezing through small openings and shrinking their body down to impossible sizes. In fact, a 600-pound octopus is capable of pushing through its entire body through a hole the size of a coin, as long as an opening is large enough to allow the creature to fit its beak through. It would travel through the opening with relative ease. It's for this reason that the claim of a shape-shifting abilities of organism 46B are realistic to the species. Additionally, a borehole the size of 123 mm would have been more than enough of a size to fit its body through if it was to make an attempt to reach the surface of the glacier. If the claims surrounding organism 46B are to be believed, the creature has the following abilities that have allowed it to take down individuals with an incredibly short span of time. Shapeshifting, hypnosis, camouflage, colossal size, ability to shrink, telepathy and large quantities of toxin. Given its danger and efforts needed to be contained by the Russian Federation as claimed by the leaked document, this could very well mean that Organism 46B is one of the most dangerous creatures naturally living on planet Earth. Its ability to be weaponized for future efforts also seems to be a very real possibility given the claims of the leaked document and other rumors that have surfaced surrounding the creature. For these reasons, Organism 46B has been given a red status. Over the years, many people have made some interesting discoveries, with the majority of these being easily explained. However, every so often there is a discovery that doesn't get explained right away. This is what happened when hundreds of ancient skeletons were discovered inside this lake. Going back in 1942, a British forest god in India made a worrying discovery. While exploring a region tens of thousands of feet above sea level, they came across a small lake and so decided to take a closer look. The weather for this time of year was different in the fact that ice had melted, and it soon revealed what it had been hiding. Inside the lake was hundreds of ancient bodies, and one thing that was obvious is that something horrid had happened. Due to the time of year, one of the first things that was put forward was that these people could have been involved in the war or were victims that were placed here. And that someone was perhaps trying to cover up activities that had happened in the area. What threw many people off though is why someone would go through the effort of placing people inside this lake. After all, it's located around 16,000 feet above sea level. This caused a team of researchers to investigate the case further. It was thought at first the individuals may have been that of Japanese soldiers. However, after Tesla carried out, it showed scientists this wasn't the case. It turns out the bones were very old. But one thing that researchers couldn't agree on is how these individuals ended up in this lake. After years of research, a team was finally able to answer that question. DNA tests revealed to researchers that the bones dated back to around 825 to 850 AD. The group was made up of locals who'd been in the area during their demise, showing researchers that these people hadn't been transported here as first assumed. Further research showed the team that the individuals in question were most likely related or could have been part of the same group, and that they most likely traveled together everywhere they went. Further tests of the skull revealed something interesting. A large majority of them showed small injuries or blows to their head. Interestingly though, these were not caused by man-made weapons such as spears or arrows, but rather these came from something that occurs naturally. The most likely explanation is that the group got caught in a large hailstorm and had sustained injuries from the event. What cemented this theory was the fact that the injuries only occurred on the top half of the bodies, suggesting that whatever caused them to pass away came from above. Researchers said there would have been thousands of these hailstones, and that these ancient humans would have had no way of protecting themselves, so they eventually passed away from their injuries. 
By analyzing the injuries and the remains, the team was able to estimate that the hailstones would have been around 20 to 23 centimeters in diameter or 7.8 to 9 inches. It wouldn't be until 1,000 years in the future until we would find their remains and be able to unravel their mystery. The paranormal is a subject that interests many of us. For many years now, people have been coming forward with their alleged encounters. One photograph is this one that shows a family reunion. The story goes that a family reunion was taking place in New Zealand and this was sometime during the 1930s. Some have said, however, that it wasn't just the family that was snapped in this photograph. If you look towards the back of the photo, you can see what appears to be a ghostly apparition. The story then goes that several family members came forward and said that there was something living in their house. The spirit was said to make itself known to the family. One member said that while sleeping, they suddenly woke up. This wasn't normal for them and so they started to look around the room. This is when they saw the apparition of a woman at the end of the bed. That described the woman as wearing a white dress. This has reminded many of the lady in white. It appears that not only are there several cases of strange sightings of ghostly female figures with long black hair wearing a long white gown, with many different origin stories of the spirit featuring tragic tales, but that these spirits appear all across the world in many different countries completely isolated from the myth. This has caused many to speculate the apparition they saw as the lady in white. Some of the family members have suggested it could have been one of their ancestors and that this individual now looks over the family. Another haunted location is that of Hollywood Cemetery in Richmond. A large burial ground full of skeletons is always going to be a scary prospect for some, but Hollywood Cemetery in Richmond, USA has built up a reputation as being one of the most haunted locations in America. Named after its Holly Dreams, the Hollywood Cemetery is one of the most famous graveyards in America. The site spans 135 acres and boasts many impressive monuments dating back to the early 20th century, such as the President's Circle and Charles Dimmock's 90-foot stone pyramid, marking the spot where 18,000 Confederate soldiers who fought in the Civil War are buried. Not only this, but Hollywood Cemetery is also known for its famous burials, which include three of America's presidents, James Monroe, John Tyler, and Jefferson Davis a Supreme Court justice and six Virginia governors. However, what has earned Hollywood Cemetery its scary reputation is the hauntings that have been reported there. Groundkeepers, tourists and locals claim to have experienced strange phenomena at nights that range from sightings of a vampire. Voices heard from the pyramid and reports of the ghost of a little girl playing with her dog. These hauntings have been reported here so persistently that Satanists have gathered there and William Wortham Paul wrote a book titled Haunted Richmond. The sighting of a Richmond vampire was first reported on October 2, 1925. This was when witnesses claimed to have seen a blood-covered creature with jagged teeth and skin hanging from its muscular body. They saw the creature running across the cemetery. It was largely agreed that the figure was a 28-year-old rail fireman known as Benjamin F. Mosby. A tunnel he had been working on at Churchill had collapsed and the boiler had erupted, resulting in him being horribly scolded with layers of skin hanging from his body and several of his teeth shattered. His damaged body matched the reports of the supposed vampire, and it was believed that people had witnessed most of these last moments as he desperately ran for help. He later died at Grace Hospital. However, this hasn't stopped people retelling the story of the Richmond vampire. There are also reports late at night of the ghost of a little girl playing with her dog by her grave. The little girl's surname was Reese, and her grave is located close to Dimmick's Pyramid. Reese started at the age of three from scarlet fever. What is not known is how the statue of a three-foot-high black cast iron dog ended up next to her grave. These are the three main theories. The first is that the girl's family wanted the dog to watch over their daughter in the afterlife. The second says that to save their assets, her family put the statue near her grave to prevent it from being melted down, and the third tells of an anonymous shopkeeper. Remembering how much Reese had loved the dog perched in the front of his store, decided to leave the statue to her. Whatever the reason for the placement of the dog, people who visit the grave have reported hearing it barking or growling. Furthermore, grounds crew have described how when they pass by the dog it's pointing one way. 
and when they return it's pointed in the other. A third report is voices being heard that appear to come from Dymex Pyramid. As previously mentioned, the pyramid was built to honor the thousands of Confederate soldiers buried in the cemetery. However, since its construction, soft moans have been heard coming from around and inside the pyramid early in the morning and at dusk. People have also reported coming into contact with cold spots at various corners of the pyramid. This has led some to conclude that all the noises are coming from all the unidentified soldiers who rest their spirits trapped in the pyramid. Another theory is that these voices come from the workers who lost their lives when the Churchill Tunnel collapsed. While record-keeping on the crew wasn't detailed, at least one or two of the 200 or so laborers inside were buried alive. Attempts to recover the bodies were quickly abandoned and they remain buried inside the tunnel. Another mysterious location is that of Squire's Castle. Squire Castle is known to be one of Cleveland's most picturesque locations. Sitting grandly in Wilbura Hills, the views from the castle are beautiful. Its front yard is a huge grassy field and its backyard is a mountainous incline. But it's not just the brilliant views that draws the thousands of visitors each year. It's also the reports that Squire's Castle is haunted. Interestingly, Squire's Castle was never meant to be a castle. The wealthy and recluse, Fergus B. Squire, was vice president and general manager of the Standard Oil Company. He decided to build a 525-acre residential compound called the River Farmer's Stain, and it was to be accompanied by himself and his wife, Rebecca. Squire's castle was actually intended to be the residence for gatekeeper of the River Farmer's Stain, which was never built. It's believed Squire gave up on the construction project because his wife Rebecca hated the idea of living in the country. Squire sold the property to a private developer and relocated to Wycliffe, where he built the massive estate of Cobblestone Garth. Before moving, Squire and his family used the castle as a weekend retreat. Though only intended for a gatekeeper, the place still boasted several bedrooms, living areas, a large kitchen and a library. It was at this location in 1920 that some believe Squire's wife lost her life. The story goes that Rebecca woke one night during a storm and went downstairs to investigate. The lightning from the storm illuminated the stuffed heads of animals in the library, which shocked her so much she fell down the stairs and broke her neck. Many have dismissed this as completely fictitious and point toward Mrs. Squire's death certificate, which shows she died of a stroke five years after the castle property was owned. But there are reports of red lights at night within the castle grounds, which some believe is Rebecca's ghost holding on to a red lantern as she roams around the halls and rooms of the castle she so hated. Last place is that of Leap Castle. Long regarded as one of Ireland's most haunted destinations, Leap Castle has been featured on a number of ghost hunting and paranormal shows. The property is located in Colberry and Bloss's historical bloodshed as families have been divided fighting over the true ownership of the castle. The castle was first constructed by the O'Bannon clan in the 12th century. It was originally known as Leap of the because the castle was built by the two Oberon brothers, contesting the chieftainship of their family, decided to challenge each other to leap from a rock. The agreement was that the sole survivor would not only govern the family, but also be responsible for the castle's construction. As can be seen, the castle was built on a foundational bloodshed. The Oberons did not manage to rule Leap Castle for long. As a family, they were subservient to the O'Carroll clan, who soon seized the property. The O'Carroll clan had a reputation of being ruthless and fueled by greed and power, so when the chief of the family died without specifically naming which one of his sons wanted to be a successor, Leap Castle was once again the site of a brotherly feud. The story goes that his brother killed Thaddeus while he was in the middle of saying a mass in the castle's chapel. The chapel became known as the Bloody Chapel, and it's said that you can still see Thaddeus' spirit roaming around it later in the night. Under the O'Carrolls, Leap Castle reportedly became home to many massacres. During renovations of the castle in the 1990s, a secret dungeon was discovered that contained human skeletons and wooden spikes. It's believed the O'Carrolls would have used the wooden spikes as a method of surprise attack for unsuspecting visitors to the castle. One of their most wicked crimes was towards the McMahon family. The McMahon family were invited to a dinner to celebrate their victory over a rival clan of the O'Carrolls. However, rather than thank the McMahons, the O'Carrolls poisoned them. 
Alongside Thaddeus' spirit, the McMahon family are also said to haunt the grounds of Leap Castle. The castle again switched ownership in the 1600s and once again the process involved blood being spilled. It's said that a daughter of the reigning O'Carroll chief Stain fell in love with an English prisoner being kept in the castle's dungeon. This prisoner was Captain Darby and he prepared an escape plan from Leap Castle with the O'Carroll daughter. Their plan was interrupted when they ran into the girl's brother on the stairwell. What ensured was a sword fight between Darby and the O'Carroll brother, and Darby was the victor. What's more, on the death of the O'Carroll brother, Leap Castle passed to the O'Kell daughter and Darby. The two married and set home in the castle. As a captain of war, Darby had amassed his own treasures and began to hide these objects throughout the castle. Losing his grip on sanity, he forgot where he'd hidden these treasures and searched for them. It's said that today this mad captain's spirit still wanders around Leap Castle, desperately seeking his treasures. Jonathan Charles Darby was a descendant of Captain Darby and resides in the castle with his wife Mildred Darby. Mildred was a writer who underwent the pseudonym of Andrew Mary and wrote many gothic stories. It's believed the inspiration of her scary stories was from her own experience living at Leap Castle. In her personal letters she writes of explaining a supernatural entity she refers to as IND, the thing and the elemental. She writes of feeling a hound on her shoulder and turning around to see a gaunt shadow and inhuman being. This being smelt like a decomposing corpse and immediately caused a deadly nausea to Mildred. Alongside it, there have been many sightings of a red lady walking the halls holding a dagger. The story behind her dates back to when the O'Carrolls held Leap Castle. She was thought to have been a prisoner who was used by the O'Carrolls. When she became pregnant and gave birth to her baby, her child was murdered with a dagger. Unable to cope with the loss of her child, the lady in Midi grabbed the dagger and took her life. Her spirit now roams Leap Castle looking for the men who killed her child. The current residents of Leap Castle are Sean Ryan and his wife, Anne. Sean himself admits to hearing footsteps, doors opening and closing and crowds talking. Strangely though, rather than reacting in fear, he has no issue with living alongside the spirit. Who he believes have just as much of a right to be there as he does. That doesn't stop a lot of locals still refusing to walk past the castle at night. Month of August 1972 will forever be an unforgettable month in the history book of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. It would have been a disastrous month if the astronaut's mission was changed. This event occurred in the month of August 1972. The sun has different regions and astronauts have labeled these regions for easy identification. A region labeled happens to be one of the sun's most active regions and has been observed releasing powerful flares. Luckily, the researchers were quick to discover these powerful flames and according to the researchers, that was an unusual occurrence and such an incident was not expected to occur at the McMath region. The region released one of the most strongest flares observed by humans and those flares were tagged as the X-Class flares. All these were reported to have happened on the 2nd of August in the year of 1972. The following day, which was the 3rd of August, the X-Class flares made the speed of the solar winds increase between 270 miles per hour to 363 miles per hour. Another effect of the solar winds was the production of a shockwave. By the third day, right up to the sixth day, the sun had released a gamma-ray light first of its kind in the history of the sun. This emission made protons travel to very high energy within the region of McMath 11076. The most surprising part of this was the fact that environmental forecasters from the Space Environment Services Center had warned against this disaster. With the aid of their advanced technology, the forecasters had issued a warning on the day the X-Class flares were released, saying that the sun might release powerful flares that may affect the Earth. The whole world believed their words on the 3rd of August when auroras were seen in America. This effect attracted the attention of big media firms who broadcasted the news. Some of the events that happened due to the solar flares were a surge in voltage, which a cable network AT&T reported in Chicago. There was a shutdown in telephone services in Iowa. Apart from America, the Canadian government also reported that solar flares had damaged a lot of their system components and telecommunication. All of these wouldn't have mattered if astronauts were in space during the solar flares. 
The National Aeronautics and Space Administration released a statement that the storm happened without any casualties. It was reported that the Apollo 16, which was part of the two Apollo missions, had less space for Earth. And luckily, this was three months before the storm. The second Apollo, Apollo 17, was scheduled to travel in December, so the storm had occurred at just the right time. NASA further explained that if any of the Apollo crew were in space when the storm happened, the radiation that person would be exposed to would have been 10 times the amount of radiation a human was meant to experience in their lifetime. This has made NASA start devising means of building a modern spaceship, in which if such flares were to happen again and an astronaut is caught in between, there would be little or no effect on the astronauts. One interesting story that's been reported is that the moon rang like a bell during Apollo 12. Over the years there have been reports that the moon does have its very own sound, with few astronauts coming forward and describing what they heard while close to the lunar surface. A particular set of astronauts were on a mission in space between the year of 1972 and 1977. Between these years astronomers installed ground motion instruments, known as seismometers on the moon so they could have recordings of the moon's activities. This included things like shakes, and these occur when energy is released on the surface of the moon. The seismometer recorded the moonquakes, and the report came out that the moon makes a sound that can be likened to a bell. This report by the astronomers backs up the report by the crew of Apollo 12. And the early months of the year 1970. History has it that Apollo 12 crashed a spacecraft onto the moon's surface. When energy is released, it causes the moon to shake. The Apollo 12 team reported that the crash led to the ringing on the moon and that this happened for around an hour. This ringing was first reported by Apollo 12 and they said it sounded like a bell. The sound of the moon soon brought forth many questions. One of those is, is the moon hollow? When Apollo 12 first heard the sound of the moon, they claimed it may have been because of this reason. Ever since the moonquakes in the year of 1972, it's been estimated that 28 moonquakes occurred before the end of the year in 1977. This was reported by the astronomers after they collected the data. All the shakes on the moon came with a sound and the sound was not different from each other is one of the reasons why the Hollywood theory started to take off. The presence of moonquakes was a sudden finding from seismometers put on the moon by Apollo astronauts from 1969 to 1972. In the course of the Apollo 11, 12, 13, 14, and 16 missions to the moon, astronauts set the seismometer instruments on the surface of the moon. Aside from the Apollo 11 seismometer that functioned for only three weeks, the remaining four seismometers were able to document almost 30 shallow moonquakes between 1969 and 1977. The quakes on the moon fluctuate between 2 and 5, meaning that it's between very minor to moderate. These instruments worked perfectly until they were turned off in 1977. Four categories of moonquakes were recorded by the instruments and they are as follows which are as a result of Earth's gravitational tug on the Moon's interior, around 434 to 700 kilometers from the surface, which is similar to how the water on the Earth brings about tides due to the Moon's gravitational pull. Meteorite impact on the Moon thermal moonquakes caused by the expansion of the Moon's fragile crust after it experiences sunlight after two weeks of the lunar night. Shadow moonquakes occur between 50 to 220 kilometers or 31 to 155 miles beneath the moon's surface. A recent discovery shows that the major reason for the moonquakes is because the moon is shrinking. Just as a grape shrinks to raisin, the moon's surface also crumbles, but the result in the surface differs. Unlike the grape, the fragile moon's surface crust breaks, causing one segment of crust to be pushed up over a neighboring pond. The cause of the shrink is linked to the cooling of the interior, which has caused the moon to have diminished by 50 meters for hundreds of millions of years. Another interesting discovery is that of ultra-diffused galaxies. When galaxies come together, they are referred to as the Virgo Cluster. Thousands of galaxies form together in what is termed Virgo Cluster. Approximately 1,300 galaxies are found in this space. In these clusters, they are grouped into low-luminosity galaxy and high-luminosity galaxy. Under the low-luminosity galaxy is another galaxy referred to as ultra-diffuse galaxy. This galaxy with an extremely low luminosity was first discovered by two astronomers in the year of 1984. 
The astronomers said there is a gas involved in the formation of stars, and this gas was lacked in ultra-diffuse galaxies. Ultra-diffuse galaxies vary when it comes to the presence of dark matter. Some of the galaxies have dark matter in abundance. Or some have no dark matter at all. Apart from the Virgo cluster, there is the Leo cluster and the Coma cluster. The ultra-diffuse galaxy could be formed when galaxies collide together, and this collision would then affect the youngest of the galaxies as the gas contents would be lost. This loss of gas would then lead to galaxies with low brightness on the surface, and this is believed by some astronomers as the origin of ultra-diffuse galaxies. Common clusters has around 1,000 galaxies in it, and the ultra-diffused galaxy is one of them. This cluster made researchers realize that the lack of gas from the ultra-diffused galaxy is due to another cluster environment. The galaxy is stripped of the gas. There is a particular galaxy cluster that stands out from the rest due to its large group and this galaxy is the Milky Way. This cluster is formed by galaxies of different sizes, densities, colors and brightness. In this group, the ultra-diffuse galaxy is very faint. This made astronomers come together from different parts of the world to determine what happens when ultra-diffuse galaxies find themselves in less clustered environments like the Milky Way. The research by the astronomers showed that ultra-diffuse galaxies are unloaded support at the center of the galaxy. This is when they find themselves in the midst of a clustered environment. Another finding is that their absence from the center of the cluster makes them younger and reduces or removes the interstellar gas. This will prevent ultra-diffuse galaxies from producing new stars at the center of the cluster. The International Space Station is one of the most impressive man-made objects. Only a few have been able to call this place home. It's a staple that shows what humans can achieve when we work together. There's various International Space Station cameras that give the public a chance to look out into the cosmos. A question that many are asking at the moment though is what's going on with the International Space Station. Various cameras are picking up mysterious objects. A new video was taken by some Uncle Crystal. She managed to record strange objects coming into view on one of the cameras. She said the following about the video. Last night I took these videos of the live feed from the ISS. Everyone is saying they're satellites. They were visible last night. However, they are seen in a straight line with some distance between them. This is looking past the Earth, but you can see some weird flashes of light in the center of the screen. This is why I started recording. There's a huge cluster of objects that start to come down the screen in some kind of formation. I may not know exactly what this is, but I do know that I saw something life-changing. Interestingly, it's not just Crystal that captured these mysterious objects. Various people have been posting videos and images of these strange anomalies. In some cases, they can be seen moving at incredible speeds, while others show them holding a tight formation. As of right now, NASA have said these objects can be explained as processing anomalies or in some cases, space debris. Nothing can be faster than the speed of light. This was said by Brad Sinos, a researcher at the Harvard-Smithsonian Center. Physics laws cannot be broken, but the scientists were able to find an example of an amazing occurrence that recently happened. The Event Horizon Telescope collaboration were the first to release images of a huge black hole, and they provided the theory that this huge black hole grew to its size by merging with other black holes. They identified it as a black object in the center of Messier 87 or M87. M87 is an enormous galaxy in the most nearby universe, and it's thought to have formed by the merger of 100 or smaller galaxies. Its mass is believed to be around 6.5 billion times that of our suns, and is 100 light years ahead of Earth. The black hole of M87 is named M87 star. The black hole has been observed emitting jets, and researchers have said they're traveling at 99% the speed of light. They were able to pick up on this by measuring them through X-rays. The black hole sucks things towards the center of the galaxy. As the material approaches, it starts to rotate around the black hole, but it isn't yet sucked in. Only small amounts of material falls in whilst the rest is ejected back into space. The ejected material takes the form of a jet that follows magnetic field lines. 
The jets are like clumps and knots traveling through space, and two of these knots have been tracked for years, with images and the data showing us how fast they're traveling, and is something that surprised the researchers when first looking through the data. One of them is traveling at 6.3 times the speed of light, while the other one is traveling at 2.4 times the speed of light. This is pretty much peak speed when it comes to anything in the universe. The knots are following the superlumial motion. It comprises of the speed of light on the path of travel relative to our sight. When the knots travel at the speed of light and are close to our sight, they cause illusions that are known as superlumial motion. The illusions were obviously the jets having more speed than the speed of light. The faster moving Nautel jet faded by more than 70% from 2012 to 2017, and the scientists have said the cause is radiations produced as it sprawls causing it to lose energy. The fading only happened in the X-ray, but not the optical or UV. This phenomenon is called synchrotron cooling. It means that scientists were not observing waves, but particles of the jets in the X-ray. Event Horizon Telescope Collaboration and Chandra data provide authenticity and support for each other. They act as the proof of each other's data. Although in Chandra's data, the jets were ejected hundreds or even thousands of years earlier. Its image was also 100 million times bigger than what the Event Horizon Telescope collaboration had imagined. The scientists were able to prove that the laws of physics cannot be broken and even the jet speeds cannot exceed the speed of light. Going back in August, scientists detected what they think was a collision between a black hole and a neutron star. Scientists observing gravitational waves may have reached a huge milestone. On the 14th of August 2019, giant detectors in the US and Italy picked up on gravitational waves and these were set off when a black hole and a neutron star collided around 900 million night years away. The researchers have seen a lot of merger of black holes and neutron stars but never with each other. This could provide some insight to neutron stars which is made up of the densest matter in the cosmos. This observation was made by LIGO and Virgo near Pisa in Italy which holds around 400 scientists. Gravitational waves are generated when really massive objects collide with each other. To measure these waves, scientists made and developed a huge L-shaped optical instrument called interferometers. Interferometers have arms that are several kilometers long. Gravitational waves were first detected in 2015, when LEGO researchers witnessed a collision between two massive black holes, which were a dozen times bigger than our Sun. Black holes are purely made up of gravitational waves that are generated when a star collapses. In 2017, merger between two neutrons was detected. These were gigantic nuclei atoms, left behind by the star that are too small to make a black hole. Now recently the merger between a black hole and a nuclei have been detected. A black hole shredding a neutron would reveal how stiff neutron matter is. It would be a great help in knowing the structure of neutron stars. Although the theorists are not sure how frequent the merger between a black hole and a neutron star occurs or how they form. Researchers show they are more likely to form if traveling in a fixed path and colliding, rather than randomly wandering here and there and somewhere finding each other. The recent new signal was particularly strong, and the detectors were able to pinpoint the location in the sky. This shows how much the detectors have improved and can work efficiently. As there is no optical counterpart present, the identification of the objects depend entirely on their masses, which the researchers find through gravitational waves. Many scientists have argued and are debating on the mass of a neutron. Many have agreed that a neutron cannot exceed the weight of 2.2 solar masses. If the astronomers are not able to find an optical counterpart, then LIGO and Virgo researchers have to rely on gravitational waves to determine the nature of the colliding objects. It's challenging, but the researchers are excited. And on the verge of a scientific breakthrough. It's reported that gamma-ray bursts emitted the brightest and most energetic light in the universe. Gamma-ray bursts are extremely energetic explosions and the researchers have observed them in distant galaxies. They are the brightest electromagnetic bursts that occur in the universe. The bursts can be for a short period of time or a long one. They can be as short as milliseconds and as long as several hours. After the gamma-ray bursts, it's often followed by an afterglow which stays for a longer period of time. 
The most intense radiation of gamma bursts is thought to be emitted when a high-mass star explodes to form a neutron star or a black hole. When binary neutron stars merge, they let out short bursts of gamma ray bursts. Most gamma ray bursts occur billions of light years away from Earth. This shows how extremely energetic they are, and they're also a rare occurrence too. All the recorded gamma ray bursts have occurred outside the Milky Way, and it's theorized that if a gamma ray burst was to happen in the Milky Way, it would cause mass extinction. Gamma ray bursts were first detected by Vela satellites, which had a different purpose in 1967. Vela satellites were designed to detect testing of nuclear weapons on the surface of the Earth. Following the discovery, many assumptions and conclusions were put forward for how these bursts were made, such as collisions of comets and stars. This information was verified in 1997 through detection of the first X-ray and optical arthroglones. By using optical spectroscopy, multiple occurrence of gamma ray bursts had been recorded. The most recent were in 2019. In November 2019, the gamma ray bursts were detected which they deduced had the most energy. They also came to a conclusion that initial gamma ray bursts is followed by low fading emission at longer wavelengths. Early searches for this afterglow were not very successful as it is difficult to observe the gamma ray bursts at longer wavelengths. They also came to a conclusion that initial bursts of gamma rays followed by low fading emissions at longer wavelengths. Early searches for this afterglow were not very successful as it's difficult to observe the gamma ray bursts at longer wavelengths. The breakthrough came in 1997 when the satellite by Posax was able to detect fading X-ray emissions through its X-ray camera. The light intensity of the gamma rays is extremely complex. Two gamma rays don't have the same light curves. If observed there is definitely a variation present there. It can be as small as milliseconds and as long as several minutes. Sometimes a weak burst is followed by more intense bursts. Some light curves are extremely complicated and complex. They are very hard to discern. Although some light curves can be simplified, there hasn't been much progress in that direction. Bursts with less than 2 seconds are named as short gamma ray bursts. Around 30% of the bursts are short gamma ray bursts. While the other 70% are long gamma ray bursts. Until 2005, no afterglows were detected, though now there have been many records of short gamma ray bursts afterglows. Most gamma ray bursts have a duration of more than 2 seconds and are known as long gamma ray bursts. They also tend to have the brightest afterglows or also observe the longest and in much more detail. Ultra gamma ray bursts occur at the end of gamma ray bursts and have a duration for more than 1000 seconds. Only a handful have been identified up until now and are only identified by their gamma ray emission duration. The detection rate is not high due to the less sensitivity of the detectors to long duration emissions. Due to long distances, the system that produces these explosions is hard to be identified. Many theories have been put forward, and the one that's been accepted is that rapidly rotating stars are collapsed into black stars in its final evolutions. Another explanation exists that says gamma ray bursts cause optical illusions. These bursts are destructive and harmful to life, and its safest environment is outside of the Milky Way. Throughout history, there have been many events that the human race has witnessed. The first trip to the moon in July 1969 by Apollo 11 is perhaps one of the most impressive. This mission is credited as being the first mission in which humans landed and walked on the moon. From that moment on, there have been many more missions in regards to space, with NASA recently coming forward and saying that they hope to go back to the moon within the next few years. One of the most recent discoveries that researchers announced is that there's living creatures on the moon. Scientists have said that right now thousands of tiny creatures could be living on the moon. This initially excited many people, as when the headlines broke many took this as life being discovered outside of our planet. The story detailed how after an Israeli lunar landing ship crashed on the surface of the moon, it released many creatures onto the lunar surface. These incredible creatures that manage to survive in the void are known as tardigrades. These represent a truly resilient form of life. They were chosen because of their ability to survive practically all kinds of natural planetary phenomena. They are called extremophiles. That means that they are resistant to extreme conditions and have the ability to survive in space. 
They can withstand up to 12 times more radiation than the rest of the living beings. Also, high pressures, extreme high or low temperatures such as minus 200 degrees and 150 degrees. And the reason why they're believed to have survived the forced landing of the Israeli ship is because they have a prolonged dehydration capacity, which allows them to go even 10 years without consuming water. So how are these incredible creatures able to survive in space? The cellular composition allows them to survive in environments such as water, air and vacuum. The tardigrades inhabit the Earth's surface, especially in layers that cover mosses, lichens and ferns. They can also inhabit ocean waters or freshwater. Although, due to their capacity for resistance, it's possible they are found in every space on the planet. These small creatures have an oval shape, eight clawed legs, a central nervous system and reproductive apparatus. Interestingly though, they lack circulatory and respiratory systems. They are very small. However, adults can be seen with the naked eyes they can reach a length of 0.5 mm, while the smaller ones are only 0.05 mm long. There are many investigations that have been carried out in regards to tardigrades. In 2016, scientists in Japan managed to revive some tardigrades who had been frozen for around 30 years. In 1948, an Italian biologist hydrated some tardigrades found in a sample of dry moss. They had been preserved since 1828. As the days passed, signs of slight movement could be seen in one of the creatures, but it then stopped moving. A Russian space mission was launched in 2007, and included in this mission was a set of tardigrades who were exposed to the vacuum and intense radiation of low I orbit. They were exposed to this for 10 days. In this mission, the resistance of these creatures were tested, and incredibly they not only managed to survive, but to even maintain their ability to reproduce. After a space mission, the Russian team found living tardigrades in the rocket deck that just arrived from outer space. Finally, the scientists of the Israeli mission sent to the lunar territory assured that the tardigrades cannot move nor reproduce on the surface of the moon. But they can remain in a state of hibernation for 10 years, or at least until they are transported and rehydrated in order to wake up from the state of hibernation. Another thing researchers have said about our moon is that astronauts warmed up the moon. Since the first space missions to the moon many discoveries have been made, but there are more unanswered questions that arise when thinking about the lunar surface and the infinite mysteries it holds. One of these questions in the midst of the scientific community was the temperature of the moon and how this was influenced by the sun, which is why different lunar missions specifically in the years 1971 and 1972 installed these sensors in order to know the temperature and changes that could be recorded from that moment on. Surprisingly the data showed an increase in temperature in the 1970s. The increase would be approximately 2 degrees Celsius. Up until now no precise explanation has been found as to why this is happening, but it is possible to determine that the warming was caused by the astronauts. In 2010 the original radio transmissions were obtained again. 440 magnetic tapes in total, which contained data on the temperature which until then had been kept hidden. At the beginning of the transmissions, only those taken between 1971 and 1974 were analyzed, leaving the transmissions from 1975 to 1977 unrevised. These were the dates when the temperature probes started working. Years later, those transmissions were recovered and the question of the warming of the moon was solved. The answer to that question was that as time went on after the astronauts had been to the moon, the heat spread from the surface to the interior, something that is not very normal. And strangely enough, the interior and exterior have less and less differences in temperature. The data that could be obtained in places where the transmissions were made show that the cause of the temperature increase is due to the tracks left by the astronauts. These are visible and a little darker than the rest of the surface. This discovery is interesting because if the heating was due to the human presence, this means that the first analysis in which the heat was only concentrated on the surface was correct. The moon reflects the waves of the galaxy. A group of scientists obtained a method by which it's possible to receive information regarding the beginning of the universe through this Earth's satellite. Some time ago, a radio telescope captured that the moon not only manages to reflect some lines, but that its surface could also reflect radio waves that can be emitted from any end of the Milky Way. 
Until then, it had not been possible to know exactly the shape of the first galaxies or even the first stars. Which is why scientists decided to use the surface of the moon as a mirror, in which waves created millions of years ago can be reflected and thus obtain enough information to create an image of how the formations of stars or entire galaxies could have been since the beginning of time. In order to use this method, it's fundamental to have a complete study of the moon's surface, its characteristics such as the regular waves it reflects, or the radio emissions according to its temperature. If none of these data are available, it may be very difficult to differentiate these waves from those that may be emitted by the Milky Way. Searching for waves in space is no simple task. Waves from an early universe can be very faint compared to waves from not-so-ancient and much brighter objects, for example traveling stars or electrons. It's interesting that even this technique must take into account the brightness of the Earth. The Earth can emit waves towards the Moon and consequently these will be reflected back to the telescopes. Therefore the signal will be contaminated with unnecessary information, so these waves have to be excluded from the analysis of information obtained by the radio telescope. This technique allows researchers to obtain a measure of the intensity of the waves received from the Milky Way as they are reflected back to the Moon. Finally, there is still much more we can discover about the Moon. We only need to pay more attention and spend more time observing and studying this incredible satellite, which seems to have some great secrets. For many years, humans have looked up to the Moon and wondered how it was formed. Right after the Sun came into existence billions of years ago, other planets in the solar system began to take shape. However, the Moon was not formed until hundreds of millions of years later. Scientists have debated the origin of the Moon and while some of these theories are still regarded as potential answers, other theories have been thrown out the window over time. Three major theories on how the Moon was formed are the Giant Impact Hypothesis, the Co-Formation Theory and the Capture Theory. According to the Giant Impact Hypothesis, a Mars-sized body called Thea crashed into the Earth around 4.5 billion years ago. The debris from the collision combined into a solitary round body orbiting the Earth and eventually made the Moon. The co-formation hypothesis states that the Moon formed in orbit around the Earth at the same time the Earth was formed. In 2012, it was suggested that the Earth and the Moon were formed at the same time after a collision caused by two huge bodies. The capture system theory looks at the Moon being formed somewhere within the solar system before it's snatched by the Earth. This theory may explain the difference in the composition of the Earth and the Moon, but most captured bodies are not spherical in shape like the Moon. During the early years of World War I, there was a sighting of a strange monster out in the open ocean that would later be referred to as the U-28 creature. According to the reports surrounding the creature, the encounter occurred on the 30th of July back in 1915. This was when a German U-boat commander known as Commander Freyfrosner wrote a detailed report following his attack on the British steamer the Iberian. He claimed that after the steamer sank, a large aquatic animal could be seen. He described the mysterious creature as being approximately 80 feet in length and similar to that of a large crocodile. The report is quoted as saying the following, at that moment, I had with me in the Koning Tower six of my officers of the watch, including the chief engineer, the navigator, and the helmsman. Simultaneously, we all drew one another's attention to this wonder of the sea, which was struggling among the debris. We were unable to identify the creature, but all of us agreed that it resembled an aquatic crocodile, which was around 60 feet in length with four limbs resembling large webbed feet, a long pointed tail and a head which tapered to a point. Unfortunately, we were not able to take a photograph, for the animal sank out of sight around 10 or 15 seconds later. This caused many to speculate that perhaps ancient creatures have survived in the modern day. After all, this isn't the first account of a strange prehistoric creature, and although the reports are slightly different, a pattern does emerge when looking at all of them. Some have suggested the creature in question is that of a mosasaur, a creature that lived in our oceans during the same time as the dinosaurs. It would have been one of the top predators during its time. It grew to massive sizes and would have fed on pretty much anything it could get its jaws on. Interestingly, the U-28 creature and the Mosasaur do have a lot in common. It's not far-fetched to say these ancient creatures could have survived the extinction event. In fact, various creatures have been discovered over the years that were thought to be extinct. 
These include creatures such as the coelacanth. This strange-looking fish was estimated to have gone extinct millions of years ago. However, every so often a diver would come forward and say that they have seen one in the ocean. This of course was immediately written off as the creature was known to have become extinct. But when more and more reports started to come in, researchers finally decided to investigate the claim. It turned out that when scientists put a team together to investigate the creatures, they not only found out they were real, but that they had been around since the time of the dinosaurs. Is examples like this why people don't rule out the possibility of prehistoric creatures still roaming our planet? Another interesting theory researchers have come forward with is that this creature was actually on board the Iberian. This theory states the boat had discovered the creature and wanted to bring it back to land for more study. However, as it was making its way back, it got into trouble with the German U-Bones. When the U-28 eventually took down the Iberian, what the German crew has seen was the creature that was on board the British boat. There's been some arguments whether the event was recorded in logs. Modern reports state that it was never noted in any logs and the captain didn't see anything. However, other theories state the captain told the crew not to talk about what they had seen. With others saying that even if it was noted down, the evidence would have most likely been taken away immediately as any proof of cryptids or other life forms as usually covered up. As with most of these events, as time has gone on it's become harder to know the truth. One eyewitness who did see the event never talked about it openly, which some say proves that he did see the creature. He feared that if he did come forward with the information he would have most likely been fired. As of today, the mystery behind the U-28 creature's story remains a mystery, and it's unlikely we'll never know what truly happened on that day. Another interesting ocean discovery was made a few years back. Going back in 2016, a strange and unexplainable deep-sea anomaly was discovered. Spotted using state-of-the-art satellite information, there appears to be a massive pyramid construction underwater that completely dwarfs the size of the pyramid seen at Giza. It appears the structure seems to be somewhere around 3.5 to 11 miles across and looks to be resting in a large area of underwater terrain in the Pacific Ocean. Many can view the mysterious structure using Google Earth satellite images, and this is done when looking at the coordinates 12 degrees north and 119 degrees west. The discovery of the object was made by a researcher located out of Argentina. He claims the structure could be evidence of the formation of ancient civilizations long before man was supposedly capable of roaming the planet. And that at a different time in Earth's history, could have experienced a change in tide that would allow the construction of this monstrosity. His theories, however, have not prevented a wide range of theories from forming in various communities. Many believe that it could very well be a possibility that the structure isn't that of a large underwater pyramid, but that of a secret base inhabiting the ocean floor. Many have often referenced the existence of strange sightings of unidentified submerged objects. Or that of UFOs exiting from under the ocean and shooting off into the sky. Given the structure's massive size, sudden appearance and strange artificial shape, this has led many to believe that the object is shrouded in mystery. Interestingly enough, other researchers have picked up on the discovery. As of right now though, it's not entirely known what the object is, and although various theories have been put forward, no one can explain the true nature of this bizarre anomaly. Another mysterious creature is that of the Cadborosaurus. Cadborosaurus, also known as Caddy, is an alleged sea monster. The creature is said to inhabit British Columbia along with various other locations in North America. Those who have witnessed the creature describe it as a long serpent-like creature with large flippings. The head of the creature is debated, with some saying it has a camel-like head while others say it has more than ancient marine reptiles. Gettys for its length vary, with some believing it's relatively large, ranging from 35 to 80 feet in length, with other reports coming in that it's closer to 20 to 30 feet in length. What's interesting is that it's one of the most witnessed cryptids. It's been estimated there's over 350 reports of this creature in the last 85 years. One of the first reported sightings of the creature was made back in 1933. It was made by a man and his wife who were on a cruise at the time. The wife is said to have got the attention of her husband because she saw something strange in the water. After observing the creature for several minutes, they realized it was something they hadn't seen before. 
They described it as looking like a serpent and having the head of a camel. The next sighting happened in 1934. This was when two government members witnessed the creature making commotion in the water. Again, they described it as being serpent-like with a camel head. By this point, the creature started to become known. The next reports were by that of two fishermen who encountered the creature in a bay. What was different about the sighting though was that two of the creatures were observed. The fishermen reported that the first one they saw was around 60 feet in length, while the other one was around 25 feet in length. Captain Paul Salba is said to have had one of the closest encounters with the creature in 1939. He said the following, We were heading north and about 30 miles offshore, saw this strange thing standing around 4 feet out of the water. So I headed over to take a close look at it. At first, I thought it was a polar bear with ruffles of hair. When we got right up alongside it, the water was crystal clear, and we realized it was at least 40 feet in length and had huge eyes. I had an old Newfoundlander as a mate and he said, do you see the eyes on him? Mouth and nose, I have no recollection at all. Just those great big eyes. And the eyes seemed to open from top to bottom. Some have compared this creature to the Hukala monster. Over the years though, sightings still come in from the creature. Explanations for what people are seeing range from jellyfish to oarfish. But it's said that fishermen wouldn't get these creatures mixed up. Astronomers have spent years looking for a mysterious star. The team behind the discovery finally found what they were looking for. It's been described as being the shape of a teardrop and it's said that it only pulsates on one side. This star's official name is that of HD 74423 and thanks to NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, researchers were able to find out more about this mysterious celestial object. The test data showed scientists the star is around 1.7 times the mass of the Earth's sun. The reason behind its strange pulsating is said to be because of a nearby star. Astronomer Don Kurtz from the University of Central Lancashire in the UK said the following, We've known theoretically that stars like this should exist since the 1980s. I've been looking for a star like this for nearly 40 years, and now we have finally found one. As mentioned, these types of pulsating stars are not anything new, and researchers have known about them for a while now. In fact, studies within our very own solar system shows that our sun does pulsate every so often. The reason HD 74423 pulsates the way it does is because of a nearby red dwarf. It flies around the star every two days, and this causes a strong gravitational pull, causing HD 74423 to take on this strange shape. A study based on this research can be found in the Journal of Nature Astronomy. One of the most interesting discoveries of recent months has been that surrounding the discovery of many new exoplanets, and this again was by the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite. For those that aren't aware, back in 2009, the Kepler satellite was launched with the purpose of discovering planets all across our galaxy and helped to shed light on the discovery of a number of potential habitable Earth-like planets located very close to our solar system. This mission proved to be such a success and at the center of a number of incredible discoveries that this led to the creation and launch of another satellite system known as the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite. And this was designed for the purpose of discovering exoplanets moving across the surface of their parent star and revealing their size in their shadows. Despite this new state-of-the-art system having been launched back on the 18th of April in 2018, it's already made a number of exoplanet discoveries in recent months. These discoveries include eight new confirmed planets, 300 additional planetary candidates, a number of gas giant planets and many Earth-like planets that have been missed by previous Kepler missions. Additionally, these new discoveries have allowed the new revelation that for a planet to form similar to those of Jupiter, it must have an orbit that has been disturbed, allowing it to form to such a massive size. Providing new insights as to exactly how gas giants are formed in the universe. At the rates this new satellite is discovering undiscovered planets, it will surely pass the Kepler satellite in a few years, as well as lead to a number of incredible insights and discoveries in the academic field. It's discoveries like these that show us how truly vast the universe is. Every other week scientists and researchers are making new incredible discoveries. It's been estimated by scientists there's around 3,000 human-made satellites in orbit around the Earth. 
After the Soviet Union launched the very first artificial satellite into orbit in 1957, various countries around the world have sought to compete, and satellites today are now used for communication, navigation, and exploration. One mysterious satellite that's been capturing people's attention for many years is the Black Knight satellite. The Black Satellite is considered by some to be an object that's very old, saying it's been above our planet for a long time now. No one knows its true age, but some have said it could be thousands of years old. This mysterious satellite has been featured in the media since the late 50s and has become one of the most talked about objects in Spain. One of the first people to allegedly pick up on the object was that of Nikola Tesla, a Serbian-American inventor who would change the world we live in. At the time, his unique mind wasn't appreciated. It's only been in the years following his death that people respect what he was trying to achieve. Nikola Tesla wasn't one to shy away from electricity and being able to harness it. Anti-gravity technology and something that become known as the ether. He would talk about it for length and believe that he could tap into it and use its abilities to create a future in which magical devices could exist and change the landscape and powers of humanity overall. It was allegedly reported that Tesla was able to intercept a signal unlike any natural sources from Earth, such as electrical storms that he had already investigated in his experiments. He reported this mysterious signal was coming from an outside intelligent source. And some have suggested that what he was picking up on may have been the Black Knight satellite. This photograph was recently published online, and some made the connection between this and the Black Knight satellite, with one person saying the following, if you look at both objects side by side, there's definitely things they have in common. I know some people have said this was a thermal blanket that was lost during a mission, but that isn't what we're seeing here. Out of the massive amount of space debris, we wouldn't be able to locate this object on various occasions. If it was as small as they make out, it would be very hard. This object is genuine and one that many of us find fascinating. One of the issues that some have pointed out though is it's tough to prove what this object actually is. There's even been some theories that have suggested this was an early satellite that's just been floating around in space. However, some have done some research and believe this photograph could be the real deal. This photograph was allegedly taken during the STS-8, which is noted as being the 8th NASA Space Shuttle mission, and interestingly this would have been captured in late 1983. Whereas the other blacklight satellite photographs were captured in 1998 during the STS-88. So this means this photograph was taken 15 years before the thermal blankets went missing on the STS-88 mission. So my question to you guys is what do you make of the Black Knight satellite and this photograph in particular? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos. It's often a huge misconception that the ancestors of the past were overall less educated or incompetent compared to the people of the present. This statement could not be further from the truth, as archaeological evidence has shown that not only have our ancient ancestors made strides that we ourselves cannot replicate today, but they battled against the elements, disease, and the worst the world had to offer long before they were able to relax and enjoy the fruits of their labor. Just because these structures exist, however, it doesn't mean that researchers know how they were created, and today even some of the materials used are of unknown origin. One of these incredible civilizations is that of the ancient Egyptians. Pyramids have become known as one of the most renowned works of ancient humans. The most popular ones are found in Egypt and the Egyptian pharaohs had them built for them. The pyramids are basically tombs for the pharaohs where they were buried along with their treasure. Traps were also set and different mechanisms were planted so that no intruders could steal their treasure. The method of burial was also strange as they wrapped their bodies in badges and left them in altars. Pyramids are also considered one of the seven wonders of the world, with the Pyramid of Giza said to be one of the oldest and largest pyramids out there. The Great Pyramid of Giza was made 4,500 years ago. And it's had a number of different mechanisms which have fascinated the archaeologists time and time again. The Great Pyramid had three swivel doors and one of them is believed to have been a 20-ton swivel door. The mechanism of this 20-ton swivel door has surprised researchers as it's not sure how they achieve this. There are many mysteries related to the pyramids and some of them have only led to more questions being asked. 
It's estimated by researchers that around 5,000 pyramids may still be existing today. The stones that had been used to build these pyramids weighed between 5 and 10 tons, and to put that into perspective, that's heavier than an elephant. At first, it was believed that the ferrets had slaves who did all the work, but later contradictions occurred and it was believed that the workers were paid to build these pyramids. The temperature outside the pyramid would have made it near impossible to work in. Researchers have said that during this time it would have been between 20 and 25 degrees. But when you're working for hours on end the construction of the pyramids would have taken their toll on the wagons. The pyramids were also covered with well-polished limestone which made the pyramids glitter like gold in the sunlight. This 20-ton swivel door was said to have been so well-balanced and built that it could have been opened from the inside with one hand. When the door was closed, it was built in such a way that it would have blended in with its surroundings and would have been near impossible to see. It serves its purpose as being a perfectly secret hidden door that can be used in case of emergency if there ever was one. The door was said to have had two parts and been the same color as its surroundings. The archaeologists were not able to find it until they opened it from the inside. This door has astonished researchers and been described as being one of the most impressive themes. Another interesting discovery is that of the intricate tunnel systems discovered under the pyramids in Egypt. The pyramid at Giza was holding a secret for many years, and this came in the form of tunnels, chambers and caves. When this structure was found, researchers discovered a lot of bats and venomous spiders that had taken up the space. One researcher was able to track down the entrance to the underground structure of the pyramid, and this was by using a book from a previous explorer. He discovered that the caves were hundreds, maybe thousands of years old, and may be the reason why the Egyptians believed in the underworld. Fervor saying they may have built the pyramids to conceal the passage, as the meaning of Giza is also the mouth of passages. For a long period of time, nobody had known these secret underground passages except for a few, but now they're coming to light and are raising a lot of questions. The entrance to the underground has been guarded. And strangely the Egyptians are reluctant to let anyone enter. Those who come to see the passages are bombarded with questions about how they knew about this place, and usually only let them enter if they pay a hefty sum. If someone is able to enter after paying, they are usually followed by a military police escort. Experts have claimed there is a lost city in the undergrounds of the pyramids. The unknown Giza Plateau has become even more mysterious after its cavern system. Subtraining passageways and chambers were discovered. These passageways hold walls which are thousands of years old. What made the people more curious is how the Egyptians sealed the information and location, unlike making it public like they'd done with the pyramids. The discovery of the passageways and having little to no information about it shows that history is not being completely passed down. A lot of such places are denied by the Egyptian authorities. Even though there is conclusive evidence that these places exist. It comes across as the Egyptians don't want to tell the world about what they know, and are being very secretive about the underworld that's been discovered. The two structures that were discovered are the well shaft and the grotto. The well shaft connects with the underground as it's a passageway that goes 200 meters into the bedrock beneath the pyramids. Many theories were put forward for the use of this well shaft that included providing air to the warchens, used as an escape route and to repair the king's chambers, but all these theories had been denied. The Great Pyramids were built and included many more tunnels that had been found. The issue is why have some of these channels and tunnels been kept secret and not properly excavated? It's hard to know what's truth and what's fiction. The grotto is a natural chamber in the well shaft and lies beneath the bedrock of Giza, but the base was later used to build and construct a pyramid. This shows how the Egyptians did detailed planning before building a pyramid. Another interesting discovery is there appeared to be a massive underground water tunnel network that ran underneath the Giza plateau that has long since dried out. This led researchers to look more into what is believed to be initially formed water chambers, and the role they could have played in the construction of the large pyramid. They found that although water beneath structures usually plays a large role in the instability of the base of the structure, it appears as if the network of tunnels and water chambers found in the pyramids appear to not threaten the stability of the pyramid. This led researchers to believe that the tunnels must have been accounted for in the construction of the pyramid or possibly added after the construction with the pyramid's stability in mind. 
Still to this day, Egyptologists and researchers are completely unaware as to what the role of these underwater chambers helped to play in the construction of the pyramids. The next thing researchers have struggled to explain is that of the mortar used. It's been reported that the mortar is of unknown origin. Along with its design, the mechanisms used inside the pyramids have also left researchers astonished. Looking at the structure from a purely mathematical standpoint, the Great Pyramids of Giza consist roughly of 2.3 million stone blocks, with each ranging from 2.5 to 15 tons apiece. According to supposed Egyptian documents discovered in nearby tombs and areas regarding the pyramids, the pharaoh recorded that only 20,000 workers built the pyramids over the course of 20 years. If that turns out to be the case according to these ancient Egyptian records, then that would mean to meet this requirement each worker would have to cut a block with perfect precision from a quarry, move this block to the pyramid alone, a task already impossible for a single man to do. And then pull the block of the pyramid into its position without any help once every 30 days. This would mean that each block would need to be placed once every two and a half minutes, with each of the 20,000 workers tirelessly performing with utter brain. The main Egyptologists have concluded that the pyramids were built with the simplest of ways. The workers used copper chisels and iron tools, as well as flint, quartz and direct pounders. Ancient Egyptians did use some advanced methods of constructing, which included large wooden crowbars and wooden sledges. Though despite the defense mechanisms, it's been agreed upon that the pyramid had already been looted and broken in before its discovery. As this is the only way to explain the disappearance of the treasure and the mummy from the pyramid. The architects also found the mortar that was used in the mechanisms, and it's been identified as an unknown object. The origin of the mortar is still unknown, and this has confused the researchers even more. The material has been tested and the mortar has been proven to contain parts of quartz, calcite and halides. Its chemical composition has been analyzed by researchers, but through various experimentation they were not able to reproduce something having the same material as the mortar. Its durability was also tested in different experiments and it was deemed stronger than stone. This video was shared on Facebook a few days ago. Since then it's had hundreds of thousands of views. The interesting video shows thousands of birds flying around in circles. The uploader said the video was taken in Flatwoods, West Virginia, and she said that she's never seen this many birds in one area before. Many of the comments pointed out how the birds seem to be acting strange, with many saying it looks as though the birds are flying around in circles. Others said the birds look disorientated. One person said the following, I've seen this type of behavior before and it's usually when something has happened nearby. For example, in my case, it was that birds in my region were allegedly poisoned, and it caused them to act like this. Other people came forward with more haunting suggestions for what was going on, with one user saying the following, these birds are not stupid. They can smell death before it comes. My granny was on her deathbed, and me and my aunt looked out the window and saw a large flock of crows flying around in a circle. Shortly after this she passed away. Ever since then I've always held the belief they can smell death when it's coming. Another user said the following, I work for an environmental agency and we usually see this behavior when there's a change in the environment. I've investigated many of these strange bird cases and what's interesting about them is that the majority of them are different from each other. There's many reasons why birds can act like this. For example, going back in 2016, I was sent out to investigate why mass bird die-off had occurred. Witnesses close to the region reported that the birds kept flying around in a circle until they started to drop one by one. These large die-offs do sometimes happen in nature. Although it's not something I've personally seen very often. This case in particular was put down to changes in the weather and environment. Another report that I investigated was how Earth's magnetic pulse shift was linked to mysterious bird deaths. These birds were not following their usual route, and it's believed this caused them to become stressed and disorientated. Scientists have come forward and said that these mysterious behaviors can be explained most of the time. However, they've also pointed out that animals have been known to become aware of events before humans. For example, this was seen in wildlife in Yellowstone National Park. Days before earthquake hit the region, large amounts of wildlife could be seen leaving the park. 
The United States Geological Survey noticed that thousands of Yellowstone elk had left the region for higher ground. One way animals are said to detect things before humans is by feeling the Earth's vibrations. Some research has suggested they can even pick up on electrical changes in the air or gas released from the Earth. And this is why if an earthquake is about to happen some animals will try and find shelter. Although humans are looking to explore space in order to further our knowledge, there's many regions on our planet that haven't been visited. This includes places like the dense jungles of our world. However, one place that's just as mysterious as that of our oceans. One of the most fascinating things that makes the oceans quite mysterious for us humans is the fact that 80% of it is still unexplored. Despite the history of sailing going back centuries, we have still only been able to scratch the surface of the water world that accounts for more than 70% of the Earth's surface. We have been sailing on the surface of our oceans for centuries now, but we've only started discovering the depths of the oceans during the past couple of decades. Treasure seekers and those looking to make some quick money have found some fascinating things over the years. One interesting discovery was made a while back by a team of treasure hunters. This mysterious underwater object goes by the name of the Baltic Sea Anomaly, and it soon made headlines shortly after its discovery. This was because the object in question looked eerily similar to what a standard UFO is said to look like, having a dish-shaped body and being fairly large and sleek-looking. The Baltic Sea Anomaly has a 60-meter diameter and can be found lying on the floor of the Northern Baltic Sea. It was discovered by Peter Lindbergh, Dennis Asberg and their Swedish Ocean X diving team back in June 2011. The team made this discovery while they were looking for an algebraic. As they passed over the object though, they received a mysterious reading. They'd never seen anything like this before and were very excited by what this object could potentially be. The group have described themselves as individuals who locate underwater treasure and bring it back to its former glory. They specifically specialize in underwater and historic artifacts. According to Ocean Eggs, the anomaly is around 3 to 4 meters thick and has an approximate diameter of 60 meters. Interestingly, this large object is said to be sitting on a thick 8 meter tall pillar-like feature and can be found at around 85 to 90 meters. One thing the team have noted though is that the visibility is really bad. And although 90 meters doesn't sound deep, it's really hard to see anything when you're down there. The team reported that on their first expedition, they started to experience some malfunctions in their equipment. They didn't think much of it, but as they passed the object, everything started to work again as normal. Thinking this was just a one-off, they then went back over the object. And once again, their equipment stopped working. This has caused the team to speculate that this object is giving off some kind of electromagnetic field. They have tested this a variety of times and every time they do, their equipment stops working. Professional diver Stefan Hagebohm said the following about it. Anything electric out there and the satellite phone as well stopped working when we was above the object. When we got away around 200 meters, it turned on again. And when we got back over the object, it didn't work. Those who have heard the Baltic Sea anomaly turning off the equipment have said this is UFO interference. There's been various cases where people have reported that unidentified flying objects have shut off their electrics, only for them to turn back on once the craft has left. UFOs are said to be able to turn off vehicle electronics when they're close by. These accounts have been reported from people operating all types of machinery. This includes things like airplanes, tractors, cars, buses, motorbikes, and even lawn mowers. Interestingly, those who reported these mysterious events said that once the craft left, everything turned back to normal. One report comes from that of a crew on a fishing vessel. They said that after spotting a mysterious object in the sky, all their electronics shut off. This included the ship-to-shore radio transmission. After around 15 minutes and when the object had passed, everything went back to normal. This report was from Iceland. And interestingly, some have come forward in detail that they had seen crafts entering and exiting the ocean. When entering the water, these crafts don't make a splash or any noise. This has caused some to speculate that these crafts are interested in our oceans. There's been many reports of those who work at sea, and they state that these objects can sometimes be seen entering and exiting our oceans at high speeds. Naval officers have reported seeing bright lights below the surface of the water. 
and then seeing a large object slowly descending into their dams. One interesting report is that of the disappearance of Frederick Volantage. On the 21st of October 1978, a man by the name of Frederick Volantage disappeared under mysterious circumstances. He was flying across the base straight in a Cessna aircraft while on a 230 km training flight. At this point he'd already done around 150 hours of flying time which made him an amateur pilot. He was confident in this type of flight so decided to do the journey. On that day at around 7 p.m. at night, the pilot radioed into the Melbourne Flight Center to report an unknown aircraft. He stated that it was following him at around 4,500 feet. The service responded and told him that there was no traffic close to him at the time of the report. Volantage was adamant about what he saw, saying a sizable unknown aircraft was closing in high speeds, saying that it had mysterious flashing lights. He added that the aircraft that kept approaching him was metallic and shiny, with a green light on it. Minutes later, Volantage reported that he was having problems with the engine, and when the service asked him to identify the aircraft once more, he radioed it isn't an aircraft. A noise like a metallic scraping sound interrupted before the transmission was cut off. Shortly after, a sea and air search were conducted around the area, but nothing turned up. The case was closed after the Department of Transport investigated the case but found nothing, assuming the disappearance to be fatal. Five years later, an engine cowl flap that came from a Cessna aircraft similar in range as Volantage was found was to show on Finland's island. According to his father, for his disappearance, Volantage believed in UFOs and was worried by the thought of being attacked by one. Ufologists believe that Volantage's aircraft was either destroyed by extra treasures or they abducted him. Interestingly, locals close to where he went missing stated they saw bright green lights around the same time. Some, however, have put forward the idea that Volantage staged his own disappearance. With all the theories surrounding the disappearance of Fredit Volantage, none have been able to give a solid answer for what happened. One of the places where many of these reports are submitted to is that of Move On. The Mutual UFO Network is a US-based company that helps people report their UFO sightings. A New York witness said the following about their encounter. Initially, I thought the lights I was looking at were dim stars or stars covered with clouds. However, I soon realized the lights were too close to the ground. They pulsated and appeared to be on the outside of a source-like flying object. As I approached the strange-looking object my electronics cut out. It scared me as I wasn't sure what this thing was and why everything was cutting out. New York Move On field investigator Mr. D. Pirano said the following about the case. The witness described the object as being huge, around the size of an acre. The witness then said the object's lights began pulsating as if to get her attention. The witness became gripped with fear. She explained she was extremely frightened as the lights now began to pulsate, changing color from white to red. The pulsating lights were then moving from front to back and then continued this way. The witness continued driving. The witness then noted from the windshield of her car the object moving rapidly. The object then started moving south away from her. At the time she attempted to use her cell phone, but she discovered that her cell phone had no service. The witness continued driving and after a couple of minutes the cell phone service returned. She said that she traveled this road several times and knows where the dead spots are and that area is not one of them. The entire incident lasted five minutes. The weather at the time of the incident was clear and nothing was interfering with the sighting. No airports are within 30 miles of the air of the incident and there's no military bases close by. The team explored the object for a second time and what they found only caused more questions. As the divers approached the object, they could see what appeared to be a dark staircase leading into the object. Interestingly, tests were sent off to try and determine what the object was made of. Steve Weiner said that according to his tests, the object was not a geological formation. A further said that the structure was made from metals which nature could not reproduce itself. The Ocean X team further said the craftlet even bigger when down there and compared it to the size of a passenger plane. While down there they could see what appeared to be a trail behind the object, this is also backed up from the sonar images. This has only led to people suggesting that whatever this object is came crashing down. These skid marks can easily be seen on the ocean floor and they baffled the team when they first saw them. 
Outside of the object on the surface, the researchers have also reported seeing unusual carvings, almost like unnatural-looking shames. The wreckage sits at a depth of 90 meters, and waters in the area are always muddy, factors that make it virtually impossible to film or photograph the site. Lindbergh has said there's a chance this object could be a natural formation, but geologists have told him this object is definitely not an underwater volcano. Going back a few months ago, the team returned to their site and while here they dropped down a remotely operated vehicle. However, when it reached a few meters above the anomaly, the team said the compass went berserk. What's interesting is the first time they went to the anomaly, something similar happened. Peter Lindbergh said the following about the event. It was very difficult to understand what the ROV was because of the terrible visibility and because of the compass that went berserk. The compass was living its own life and the tether was snagged all the time. The UFO community have said that it's possible this object could be an unidentified flying object. However, scientists and researchers are of the opinion that this object is natural. Although various tests have gone against this, other researchers have suggested that it formed during the Ice Age, but they're not sure about what it is. More research needs to be carried out to determine what exactly the object is. Many are well aware of the commonalities seen when reading over UFO reports and what they tend to mean when spotted. The term UFO has become synonymous with images of extraterrestrial life, despite the term having existed in aviation for many decades prior to the alien abduction phenomenon. Prior to its stigmatization with the extraterrestrial phenomena, which stands for unidentified flying object, was commonly used in the military to help classify enemy planes which hadn't been identified. Though it might seem obvious in explanation, many still can't help to envision little green men when the term UFO is thrown around. UFO is not the only term that's grown in popularity within the UFO community. There appears to be another term that is slowly becoming far more popular and shedding light on the technological capabilities of these crafts. Known as unidentified submerged objects, there have been a number of reports by fishermen, naval intelligence and a wide variety of anonymous claims. They describe sightings of bright lights or quick-moving objects through the ocean that do not fit the design of anything terrestrial in nature. These USOs as they're called have also proven to look remarkably similar to UFO sightings in dish-shaped graphs. In fact, many sailors have claimed to have seen USOs rise out of the water and fly away as a massive bright light. This has led many to consider the very real possibility that UFO crafts also have the ability to serve as submerged crafts. Over the last few years Sweden has had its fair share of strange goings-on. UFOs have been reported here constantly and it's said to be a hotbed for USOs. An unidentified submerged object or USO is any object or optical mechanical detection phenomenon of unknown origin observed under the water. That remains unidentified even after a thorough investigation by researchers. Reports on USOs are not new. They go back many years and sometimes come from very credible sources. In one incident that the former U.S. Navy commander David Fravel narrated, they saw a dark mass underwater while they were retrieving a drone for flying practices and described it as a big mass kind of circular. The second time the pilot saw the dark mass, a practice torpedo that the pilot had been sent to recover was sucked down into the ocean in the presence of the underwater mass and was never to be seen again. In another interview he revealed that a 79-year-old lady reached out to him after his sighting went public and she reported that her father who was a formal naval officer showed her a telegram which stated that unidentified objects had been seen going in and out of the water. In January 1965 Captain Bruce Caffey, a DC-3 pilot in North Island spotted a USO and described it as metallic, streamlined and symmetrical in shape, approximately 100 feet long and 15 feet out as wide as far. The New Zealand Navy told Captain Caffey that no submarine could have been in that area. In January 1968, several eyewitnesses reported seeing a large dislike object hovering over Wellington City and said that it was heading for Island Bay. The area police reported that they could see the object from the coast of binoculars. Between 1957 and 1968, a Brazilian scientist was startled by something that came roaring out to the sea. This object had smashed through 37 feet of ice, going up to the sky like a silver bullet. Other eyewitnesses saw blocks of ice that had been thrown into the air, falling all around. 
with a lot of steam coming from both the hole in the ice that was falling. In August 1974, two eyewitnesses from Orana Beach reported seeing a very dark object protruding from the water, appearing to have smaller dots flying around it and assumed that they were helicopters circling a submarine. The object was described as being large and looking like a large cylinder. In the southern part of Siberia lies a mysterious lake which has many stories attached to it. This interesting lake goes by the name of Lake Baikal and it's reported as being the deepest and most ancient lake on the planet. Due to this, it's been given the name of the Pearl of Russia. This lake is deep and it's said that within these depths of creatures and objects, only a few have seen. Giant lake monsters have been reported to live in Lake Baikal. Perhaps the most interesting reports from this region though is the vast amounts of unidentified flying objects said to be interested in this area. Interestingly, declassified Soviet-era documents have been discovered which detail the Russian Navy having run-ins with UFOs. Although these documents don't just mention USOs or even the lake in particular, the two are talked about in the document and it's led some people to believe that these crafts have been visiting the lake for many decades. For years now mysterious blinking lights have been seen by various people visiting the lake. These mysterious objects are known by the locals and they have said that they've been here for many years. Some groups have suggested that these crafts are after something inside the lake while others have said they're just observing. Others have suggested that these crafts actually enter the water and have on some occasions been seen exiting the water at very high speeds. This has caused them to become known as US owns. What then are the people around Lake Baikal witnessing? The truth is no one knows what these crafts are or what they want. Information on them is limited and they've never been photographed going in and out of the water. One interesting account of these UFOs involves that of a Russian Tu-154 plane. This plane was said to have been chasing an unidentified flying object when something suddenly went wrong. It caused the plane to make an emergency landing in the lake. It said the plane was sent out because one of these UFOs was getting too close and the military wanted to know what it was. However, the plane wasn't able to get close to the craft and some researchers have suggested the UFO shut off the plane's lead rings and this is the reason why it crashed into the lake. Perhaps the most interesting account to come from the lake is that of the lake people. This first contact happened in 1982. This was when Navy divers in the lake reported seeing what they described with giant humanoids. They said the beings were much larger than them and appeared to be wearing some kind of suit. The divers were interested in these underwater giants and so decided to go and investigate. However, the story goes that as they approached the beings, they were quickly thrown to the surface of the lake. And due to the force in which this happened, the team suffered multiple injuries. With some of them even passing away. The Russian government however denies that this happened and that it's nothing but stories. Interestingly, these aren't just one-off reports either. Many have come forward with their alleged encounters and each one follows a similar theme. Reports detail that when approaching near the continent of Antarctica, Japanese crew members will report seeing what appears to be large giants laying out in the ocean and that they appear to be humanoid in shape. These creatures are described as being 20 to 30 meters in length and completely white in color. Others have often reported that the creature was originally mistaken as being a large submarine in the distance before getting closer and seeing hound's fingers, eyes and a mouth. This has led to the name of the Ninjen by the Japanese crew, whereas others simply refer to these creatures as the Antarctic humans. To this day, a few images can be found online. Some suggested that these are recreations and not the actual creature itself. Those who have had a close encounter with them have described them as being a calm creature and do not mind humans being in the area. Over the years there's been many strange reports. Although most of these end up getting solved, some of them remain unanswered. One interesting account is that of military soldiers that encountered a mysterious being. The story goes that back in 2002, a military unit encountered a giant being in Kandahar. American soldiers were trekking up a mountainside when they saw signs of a large being. Footsteps could be seen in the area. And so the soldiers decided to investigate to see what they could find. While looking around the mountainside, they could hear strange grunting noises. This was when they saw a large humanoid run out of a cave. They reported that the being was over 13 feet tall and had red hair. 
It had six fingers on each hand and was hostile towards the military unit. One of the men unfortunately didn't make it as he was pierced by the being's large spear. The giant was said to be dressed in animal skins. This whole mission came about because a military unit went missing in the area. This caused another unit to go looking for them. However, when they did, they ended up finding more than what they bargained for. After the soldier got pissed with the spear, it then turned his attention to the rest of the group. The others quickly fired at the giant, hitting all over his body. They continued to do this until the giant dropped to its knees. After this, the unit reported it to their superiors. They gave them clear instructions to hide the body and stay near it, ensuring that no one nearby saw what they were trying to hide. After this, the body was taken to a secure location, and allegedly the soldiers were told not to talk about this incident. One of the issues with this story though is that there's no evidence to back it up. And all we have today are these alleged claims. Interestingly, this story reminded many people of the red-haired giants of Lovelock Cave, saying that these beings have been reported for years all over the planet. Many of the Native American legends relate to the stories of tribes of giants that roamed the earth at one point in time. One such legend comes from the Paiute tribe that lived in the Nevada region a thousand years ago. This remarkable legend is about a mysterious race of red-haired giants, also known as the Sidakar. According to the legend, these redhead giants haunted humans and also ate them. These giants came to America from an unknown island. They crossed the oceans on rafts that they had built using fibrous plants. According to the native legend, the redhead giants waged war on the tribe and other neighboring tribes. They also terrorized the tribes for many years. Finally, they decided to unite against this fierce enemy race. Their unity and consistency in fighting the red-haired giants resulted in the death of the giant race. The last remaining giants ran away and sought shelter in a cave. The tribes then went to these caves and started a fire at the entrance. This was in order to burn and suffocate these giants inside the cave. After that, the tribe sealed the mouth of the cave. This legend of the red-haired giants could have easily been dismissed had there not been similar tales of cannibal red-haired giants among other Native American tribes. Interestingly, between the years of 1912 and 1924, something remarkable happened. A group of archaeologists from the University of California discovered a number of strange objects inside the Lovelock Cave. Among the objects were the mummies of red-haired giants. These mummies were 8 to 10 feet in height. As they were found in the Lovelock Cave, these giants were named the Lovelock Giants. The archaeologists also discovered a pair of giant sandals, far too large to fit an average human's feet. These sandals were 15 inches long and had signs that showed they were once worn by someone. Researchers also discovered a handprint on one of these stones in the Lovelock Cave. The imprint came from a massive hand. Many of the items found in the Lovelock Cave are today held in many different museums and private collections. In 1931, two large skeletons of red-haired giants were found buried close to the Lovelock Cave. These amazing discoveries have led several people to believe that at one point in time these giant humans did exist. Another interesting account is that of the Maelstrom Air Force Base UFO. Our next mystery begins on March the 24th, 1967 in Roy, Montana. This was around 60 feet below ground in the missile launch bunker of Monstrum Air Force Base, and this happened during the peak of the Cold War. This bunker was in control of 10,800 kilotons of nuclear warheads, which were codenamed the Minuteman 1. Sometime during the morning hours, the missile control men got a call from a terrified guard station above the bunker. They reported seeing a flying glowing red object that would accelerate and stop in an instant. It would then reverse its course, turn a 90-degree angle and seemingly defy all laws of physics. Those who saw the craft and heard the story said that it was unlike any man-made aircraft. As the men were informing the commander of the base what was going on, the unthinkable then happened. All 10 missile control lights switched from green to red. All 10 missiles were disabled at the exact same time. With this, America's missile shield was down. This terrified the men even more as this was a hot time during the Cold War, and the threat of nuclear retaliation was the only thing holding back both sides from annihilating each other. As the crew tried to get the missiles back online, they contacted another missile crew on the base. What they discovered was bone-chilling. 
The week before, the second crew also reported seeing the unexplainable glowing object hovering above the base. As the crews were conversing, the second crew's missiles were also disabled, leaving the entire base unarmed. Shortly after, the UFO flew away never to be seen again. It took the base almost 24 hours to get the missiles back online. While missiles going red is not entirely impossible, as it does happen on a very rare occasion, all missiles going off at the same time is undeniably unlikely and must have had some sort of outside influence. Another interesting incident is that of the Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. While many think of the highly classified Area 51 as the home of alien research and is the center of the most extensive alien cover-up in the world, many might be surprised to hear Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. The Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Greene County sits in a location that was once Walbur Wright's Airfield and Farfield Aviation General Supply Depot and is a complex of many buildings. The one of interest is that of Hangar 18. Hangar 18 is widely known by UFO enthusiasts as it's said to be the location that the government hides the physical evidence of extraterrestrial contact, whether it be the remains of spacecraft debris, extraterrestrial equipment and allegedly even the corpses of aliens. Allegedly, there's a highly guarded top-level clearance inside the warehouse codenamed the Blue Room. Due to various sources, this location is home to the least classified information, and this comes from those that have worked there. It's widely believed that this Blue Room is the location where the United States government houses captured alien life and conducts experiments on them which often lead to termination. The notoriety of Hangar 18 goes back to the infamous Roswell event, the alleged crash in July 1947 near Roswell, New Mexico. This was where there was a recorded press release issued by the Roswell Army Airfield, stating that the personnel inspected the crash of a flying disc and that they sent it on to the headquarters for research. Shortly after, there was another press release from the Air Force Base in Fort Worth, Texas. It claimed to be the headquarters that the remains were sent to, not Wright-Patterson, and that the remains were only that of a weather balloon. However, throughout the years, the government's repeated use of the excuse of weather balloons and swamp gas became so cliched that much later in 1994, the Air Force Base went on to say this was untrue, and that it was in reality testing a surveillance device that was designed to fly over nuclear research sites in the Soviet Union, which was equally backed by a complete lack of evidence. On multiple occasions, the Air Force had denied the rumors and stated there was never a building called Hangar 18 even close to the base. However, satellite imaging has shown that to be only semi-true, as there clearly is a structure named Building 18. However, many refuse to believe the misdirection away from Wright-Patterson, as it has been officially documented as the home of Project Sign, an initiative that was signed into action in July of 1947 and was dedicated to studying reports of UFO sightings. The project was converted into Project Grunge in 1949 and then into Project Blue Book in March 1952, which led to the Blue Room Theory. It was officially stated that Project Blue Book was only designed to study crashed Soviet aircraft from the Korean War. However, Senator Barry Goldwater was recorded asking General Curtis Lee May for access into the base, with which Lee May was quoted saying, not only can't you get into it, but don't you ever mention it to me again. A very suspicious response to request to see a bunch of shot down Soviet aircrafts. The last interesting report is that of the military encountering paranormal entities while on duty. Definitely seen as one of the strangest reports of modern day encounters for the Jinn was a military encounter in Iraq back in June 2003. An Iraqi soldier and other fighters were stationed at the second floor of a police department to assist with the attacks against the police. This was between the locals and the law enforcement of the city. A lot of people were confused of this sudden attacks by the police. And so one of the main purposes of the Iraqi army was assisting with safety to uncover the reasons as to why such disturbances were taking place. In one of the reports taken by an Iraqi military squad stationed for 24-7 surveillance, they claimed that they encountered several jinn, of whom were watching and patrolling the station. The report details that they believed the individuals to be jinn due to the fact they had glowing red eyes and seemed completely unfazed by the bright surveillance lights used to blind past buyers, of whom attempted to get too close to the station at night. Shortly after the report was filed, the entire station was attacked and every soldier and police in the department passed away from injuries. 
It then circulated that the gym were at the center of the attacks and the majority of the disturbances were caused by the gym waging the plans of attack. After the report surfaced, the attack stopped. With many locals claiming the gin went back into hiding after they were discovered. Back in 44 AD in Jerusalem, a soldier decided to fight, which probably at the time seemed like a great thing to do. However, it eventually led to around 10,000 people losing their lives. The Jewish War is a book written by Josephus, a Roman Jewish historian of the first century, and it details in at the time that a Roman soldier farted. When the soldier let rip, it triggered a revolt against Jerusalem's rulers. According to the story, the Romans who had control of Jerusalem during that time used to always keep a lookout and have guards stationed at festivals. This was to make sure that no fights would break out and that events could happen without any issues. During one of these events, a soldier pulled back his garment and carrying down after an indecent manner, turned his breech to the Jews and spoke such words as you might expect upon such a posture. Reading between the lines, historians have said the soldier let rip in front of the crowd, and the crowd was not pleased with the soldier's actions, as it then caused an all-out riot. The crowd soon became too much for the soldiers, so the Roman leader of Jerusalem, Ventilius Comanus, called for additional reinforcements. Josephus detailed the following, the violence with which they crowded to get out was so great that they trod upon each other. They squeezed one another until 10,000 of them were killed. One author described this action as the granddaddy of all fart destruction. Interestingly, he wrote this account a few decades after the event happened. So some historians and researchers have said the numbers could be exaggerated. Regardless, the event is still believed to have happened. And chaos was created from a soldier letting rip. Interestingly, this isn't the only time that people have lost it due to someone farting. It's reported that back in 569 BC, due to someone letting rip, it caused frustration and a revolt against King Apruz of Egypt. According to the story, King Apruz sent one of his soldiers to try and calm arguments that were going on between the soldiers. These arguments were thought to have been quite bad, and multiple generals were getting worried about it getting out of hand. The rebel soldiers claim Amazis would become their new ruler and that they would follow in his footsteps. When the king got wind of what was going on, he sent one of his best generals to sort out the situation. When he arrived, he tried to sort out the problem with Amazis. However, he farted and told the general to carry that back to Abre. Due to how badly the king handled the situation, there was uproar and Amazis would take official reign. Perhaps being the only time that a fart would lead to someone becoming a king. It's reported that Amethyst was a good king and took Egypt to new heights, in particular bringing Egypt to new levels of wealth. Reports state the king would have teams of workers build monolithic shrines for temples. He would go on to marry a Greek princess named Lades, who was the daughter of King Battis III. Herodotus reported that after visiting Egypt less than a century after the king's death, the country was in a much better state. He said the following. It said that it was during the reign of Amazes that Egypt attained its highest level of prosperity, both in respect of what the river gave the land and in respect of what the land yielded to men and the number of inhabited cities at the time reached in total 20,000. Various mysterious events have been brought to the surface in recent years. Some of these do eventually go on to get explained, but some of them remain a mystery. This mysterious photograph was allegedly taken in a cave in the Republic of Honduras. Not much is known about the photograph, but the uploader said that while in the cave they decided to take some pictures. They said it was quite dark inside and the deeper they went the darker it got. They took some photos in a dark spot and managed to capture something they couldn't explain. When looking back at the photos, they noticed a strange apparition. They had no idea what it was and couldn't explain where the light source was coming from. The area where the photograph was taken was closed in, and they said there was nothing nearby that could have created it. Strangely, some have suggested that the lighter nominee is in fact an angel, suggesting that it has the same shape and colors of many other angels that have been caught on camera. As of right now though, the photograph remains a mystery, with the individuals not knowing what they captured on that day. Another mysterious event is that of the Hollingwell Incident. The Hollingwell Incident remains one of Great Britain's biggest unexplained mysteries. Thirty years after the event, it still continues to puzzle experts and the local community. 
In the summer of 1980, the annual Hollingwell Show was gearing up in Kirby and Ashfield. As part of the event, the Forest League of Juvenile Jazz Bands decided to create a junior brass and marching band competition. With entrants coming from across the East Midlands, around 500 children from 11 different marching bands had traveled distances of up to 40 miles to attend. Tired from their journeys and nervous about the upcoming performance, the atmosphere behind the scenes was tense. However, tension alone couldn't explain where at 10.30 a.m. hundreds of band members began to collapse. Whatever had caused this soon spread to the adults and babies in the audience. In total, 259 people were taken to four nearby hospitals, with symptoms ranging from sore eyes and throats to nausea. Nine patients were held overnight. Hypothesis from the event on the day spanned from contaminated water, gas leaks to FOs and even the demonic power of Satan. Water and gas companies confirmed all supplies were working as usual and should not have harmed any of the locals. The official inquiry ruled that mass hysteria was most likely the cause. All the symptoms of mass hysteria, nausea, stomach cramps, headaches and fainting were present in Huntingwell that day, and the vast majority of victims were young females which is also in line with mass hysteria's demographics. But could an incredibly rare epidemic of mass hysteria really explain the events of that day? Not all the people present were convinced. Adamant that their symptoms were real and not the result of mass hysteria invented by Sigmund Freud, they were unhappy with the official diagnosis. They argued that mass hysteria could not explain all of the events in Hollingwell. First, according to Freud's notes on mass hysteria, babies are much too young to be influenced by their surroundings, so would not be susceptible. However, Margaret Palethorpe brought her three-month-old baby to the event to collapse in her pram. Secondly, Terry Bingham was one of the adult males who experienced the effects of a burning in his throat and eyes. As a fireman and miner accustomed to perilous, intense working environments, he argues he would not have been bothered by a massive stereo event. A popular theory that has emerged since Hollingwell is that the events of the day were a result of a pesticides in the atmosphere. In 2000, Tritomorph was a pesticide that was banned by the British government and described as hazardous by the World Health Organization. Back in 1980 though, the pesticide was perfectly legal and found sprayed on fields that surrounded the Hollingwell surroundings. Interestingly, the symptoms the victims of Hollingwell displayed of irritated skin and eyes are known side effects of Tridemorph. The only problem is whether it's likely that a chemical was sprayed several hundred yards away and several days before the Hollingwell show is to blame. Is it likely that it would have affected hundreds of people at the show? As of today, this event remains a mystery. The next interesting discovery is that of alleged 2.8 billion yield spheres. The clerk stopped spheres at small objects discovered from 3 billion yield deposits mined in South Africa. The intricate nature and resistance of these objects has led some to believe they are not natural and could have only been manufactured by intelligent beings. Michael Cremo is a prominent member of this theory. He argues that the perfect shape intricate inside and unbreakable nature of these objects are evidence of a pre-human civilization and that they existed on Earth billions of years ago. He likens the objects to similar spheres found in Utah that legends hold are two million years old and belong to the departed ancestors of the Hopi Native Americans. Cream and others argue that the shapes are so balanced and in proportion that it's extremely unlikely they were naturally formed. Reportedly, a man by the name of John Hurd took one of the spheres to the California Space Institute and was told its balance was so fine that it exceeded the limit of their measuring technology. The inside of the spheres have been described as being perfectly concentric rooms that look like they've been molded and are harder than steel. However, Cremo and others have been met with resistance. Poor Henrik critiques the sources used and therefore says that the research is flawed. Henrik argues that the supposed perfect shape of the spheres is exaggerated. Instead, some of the spheres vary from flattened spheres to an oblong shape. Some of them were even found interlocked with each other. All these forms would fall within the range of shapes exhibited by natural concretions. The inside of the spheres are also argued by Henrik to be natural in origin. The grooves represent fine graham laminations within which the consecrations grew and are similar to other natural objects found 2.7 to 2.8 billion years ago in Australia. 
and finally claims by Cremo and others that the spheres are stronger than steel have been dismissed. This is when five of them were examined and none were harder than four to five on the Mohs scale. In context, steel has a rating of between seven and eight. Interestingly, since Henrik's critique of Cremo's wife, other sources have come out of the woodwork to deny their claims. Charles Marx had been previously quoted as stating that the spheres had been known to rotate themselves, and this was in vibration-free display cases in the Klustop Museum. He has since retracted this statement, saying that it's untrue to say that display cases were free of outside vibrations, and that the spheres were likely rotating due to vibrations from underground blasting in local mines. Henrik has built up his case to argue that all the evidence actually points to the spheres being a natural phenomenon, rather than being the creation of a pre-human civilization. He argues that they show every sign of originating as concentrations which formed in volcanic sediments. It's ultimately up to the reader though whether to follow Kimo's argument, saying that the spheres are man-made artifacts, or Henrik's which state they're a result of Mother Nature. Last discovery is that of the Tucson artifacts. The Tucson artifacts are the lead objects discovered by Charles Mania and his family in the Pitch Rocks in Arizona. When Mania stopped to examine some old lime kills, he saw an object protruding from the ground. This revealed itself to be a lead cross weighing 64 pounds. Mania's friend Thomas Brent on hearing about the cross, hurried to the site and began excavating. A total of 31 lead objects were found including crosses, swords and religious objects. The objects contain Latin inscriptions that when translated tell a story of the leaders of Kalilas and their conflicts with a barbarian enemy known as the Talshas. If true, this would be a historical revelation. It would show that Europeans were in North America before Christopher Columbus discovered the lamp. Unsurprisingly, the Tucson artifacts and the historical information they reveal have become a controversial topic. Forensic geologist Scott Walter's chemical tests on the objects led him to confirm their authenticity, and Brent was so convinced that he wrote a 350-page manuscript titled The Tucson Artifacts. However, notably, this remains unpublished. Others have not been so accepting of the artifacts and branded them a hoax. In particular, the artifacts have come under fire for their lead quality in the Latin inscriptions. The lead that the Tucson artifacts are made of is not highly refined, and contains different mixtures of tin, zinc, copper, gold and silver. This mixture is consistent with lead from 20th century lead battery anodes, and not lead dating back thousands of years. The quality of the Latin inscriptions of the Tucson artifacts is questionable. Most looked like they'd been copied from classical authors, such as Virgil and Cicero, or texts that are widely found in Latin grammar books and dictionaries. Rather than the objects being created by the ancient people of Kalilas, it's been proposed that the objects were created by a 20th century artist. After news of the artifacts was published in newspapers, a rancher came forward and claimed the objects were the work of a Mexican sculptor, and his name was Timio Odehai. Odehai was a former classic student who lived near the site where the objects were discovered, and was known for his abilities in crafting lead objects. With a knowledge of Latin and Lend, the creation of the Tucson artifacts would have been in Odehai's range. The only problem is that other than the rancher, nobody seems to have heard of Odehai. If the artifacts were our homes, it seems odd that he would put so much time, expanse and labor in creating an extensive collection of artifacts that he would never profit from. Whether the Tucson artifacts are the work of an ancient civilization or a sculpture is a question that remains unanswered. Seen as one of the largest and most influential religions in the world, Christianity dates back as far as 2000 years ago and derives the majority of its legends and myths from the Judaism religion. These writings, as referenced in the Bible, a collection of ancient scriptures have often been regarded as incomplete translations or scriptures missing a large amount of information. It's believed it was discarded eons beforehand in an effort to filter out what the Catholic Church and the ancient kings thought time was for humanity to remember. These true scriptures and details were thought by scholars to have been completely destroyed and lost to time, unable to be recovered for the foreseeable future. However, this turned out not to be the case after the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls. These ancient scrolls contained first-person accounts of ancient stories regarded in the Bible from that of the Book of Enoch. 
To the complete story of Noah as well as a tremendous amount of information regarding the nature of angels and fallen angels. What was so strange about these stories was not their complete and unedited nature, but rather the detail inside these legitimate documents and the stories they told. Many accounts in the Book of Enoch regarded the angels similar to that in Design of Aliens, with Enos even recounting entering a floating cloud, in which they resided via a beam of light that was encased around him and floated him inside. Once inside this cloud, that was described by Enoch as using smokeless fires, bright lights and lightning, he wrote that he was brought out into the stars and observed strange phenomena that many experts believe are referring to known anomalies in our galaxy, such as supermassive black holes, our sun itself and many other cosmological constants recorded in first-hand accounts. Not only this, but after Enoch journeyed with these angels through the stars for a couple of weeks, upon coming back to Earth, he realized that more than 300 years had passed. When the Dead Sea Scrolls were originally found scattered throughout 12 different caves in the region, many believed it to be the complete collection of the scent, and no evidence of other caves or artifacts could be discovered. Recently, however, back in late 2017, a new Dead Sea Scroll cave was located, making it the 13th cave to house these strange artifacts. Considering these scrolls hold unedited original versions of biblical history, as well as additional stories removed from worship scriptures. They could more than hold the secret as to many religious traditions, histories and evidence of ancient biblical knowledge. However, the Museum of the Bible in Washington, D.C. recently came forward with a startling discovery. They said the following, the Museum of the Bible is trying to be as transparent as possible. We're victims. We're victims of misrepresentation. We're victims of fraud. After an exhaustive review of all imaging and scientific analysis results, it's evident that none of the textual fragments in the Museum of the Bible's Dead Sea Scroll collection are authentic. Moreover, each exhibits characteristics that suggest they are deliberate forgeries. So it turns out these scrolls are fake. It's made people question what other ancient texts and documents could be out there that are potentially fake. As technology increases, it will help researchers to piece together which are fake and which are genuine. 